the starting lineup of your favorite show. And producer, 5'11", from Blanchester, the cow killer, Casey McCollister. And comic engineer, standing at 4'8", the pride of the west side, Elliot Rearing. We're back, back in the saddle and off the bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. Very, very, very appreciative of the United Dairy Farmers for supporting this show for quite some time. We have the usual cast of characters in here today. Elliot Rearing, Casey McAllister, coming to you live from good Hamilton, Ohio. The only goal that I had today when I woke up was, quite frankly, to make sure that I could make it through the day, wake up tomorrow morning, and I still had all my belongings, I still had all my loved ones, because uh, when the Weather Channel shows up in your town, and when I'm talking about the Weather Channel, I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about like the local on the 8th where they start making up stuff about the local weather because they don't have anything to talk about. I'm talking about the legit Weather Channel. You know, the Storm Chasers, the one that bring the, the big van, they got the satellite dishes on top. They're in Cincinnati today. Which would make you think, maybe we shouldn't come in and do a show, but we haven't done a show in a couple days, so I looked at the weather and I was like, okay, it looks like we can maybe, we maybe, maybe should be able to do a show inside. Then I come in and I, I, I get in here and I'm, I'm just, just glad handing around and uh, Reed Mouse walks in and he's like, I'm like, you gonna be on the show? You should be on the show today. No. Miami softball plans to play a doubleheader today in Oxford. <laughs> How? I don't know. I've looked at the weather. I've, I, I was planning on preparing for this show. I could give myself a good 20 minutes of prep time. Sure. Of, of trying. And again, maybe one would suggest you need more than 20 minutes of prep time for a two-hour talk show. But, you know, sometimes around here, uh, you get what you get. But I'm sitting there. I'm looking at some notes. I'm, I'm trying to think of some things that, that obviously would be entertaining to talk about. And we have those, those things. You can see, obviously, the big story of Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. We'll talk about that for a brief moment. we got the final four. Finally at the final four. Some big Cinderella stories that, that uh, someone in this room may have called, maybe not. We'll get into that. DJ Burns, big-time player. Then we got the Reds, of course, and we'll end it with uh, some buy or sell. But the idea that Reed is preparing to go to Oxford in about an hour or two, I got to be honest, this is not just like a joke. I, there's something morally in my body right now that just says, hey, you're not going to go. Because every time you do something in life and it goes horribly wrong, after the fact, you always look back and you think, really, that was an incredibly dumb decision. When you, when you peel the layer off that onion just a little bit, maybe we should have thought about that for half a second. I'm not suggesting for a single second they, that they, they're not capable of trying up there. But hey, we're a, we're a small knit group here. We can't be missing anybody. Reed Mouse goes up to the to the to the Oxford and he blows away like Dorothy <laughs> and we're in trouble. We're in some big, big trouble at Chatterbox Sports. So I got a dilemma to make. In fact, this is the quickest, fastest chat poll question of the day in the history of Off the Bench presented by United Dairy Farmers. We come your way every single day from 10 a to 12. P. And the, the chat poll question of the day is going to be simply put, would a good boss send Reed to Oxford? Yes, no. I don't think the answer is yes, if we're being honest. It just doesn't seem like the, the uh, it doesn't seem like that math adds up. But best of luck to the Red Hawk softball team. I assume they're playing bowling green today in a double header. I've looked again at the radar five thousand times and I just don't see how that's feasible. First pitch, I think, is at one P. That's right. One and three. I just don't get it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm soft. I'm starting to wonder. That's my next concern. Am I getting softer in my old age? Am I overly concerned about things? You know, the people that run to the grocery store and they buy all the milk and buy all the bread. I'm not there yet. I'm not that guy. But I'm starting to wonder if I'm going to be that guy in 30 years. Maybe that's how you, you morph, you evolve. You start to concern yourselves over, over weather matters when you shouldn't. But we'll find out. I'll let the, 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 the chat figure out 
what uh, ultimately it should decide. That'll be a great headline. What? Boss of Chatterbox Sports decides whether to send employee to dangerous weather. Let's say YouTube poll decide his fate. <laughs> and the YouTube poll failed. <laughs> we shall find out. Reed is not going to be in the show today. But instead, we have Elliot and we have Casey McAllister. Elliot. Wow. Casey. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'm, I'm not a complainer, but some, sometimes you can misconstrue that and say I'm a complainer. This morning, my, my drive to work, I would say, was not pleasant. Uh, for, it was pouring down rain. And, and I got, you know what? I make a lot of jokes about my 2003 Chevy Impala. She's a tank. I mean, she's a tank. She fights through the rain. She doesn't slide. She doesn't slip anymore. She's great. Uh, the one thing is, if she does stop for a long period of time, she'll just shut off. She gets a little tired. She gets a little tired. When you're old, you get a little bit tired, and she needs a little nap. So when we're stopped for a long period of time, she takes her nap. I got off on the coal rain exit today, uh, and I was parked there for a good 15 to 20 minutes before uh, traffic ceased. There was a big, there was a big crash uh, involving some truck hauling a bunch of garbage in the back of his truck. And, and, and it's always those types of vehicles that, that, that are causing accidents. Having, they, I think this guy had a mattress in the back, and it was, flinging, it was flying off uh, in the middle of the road while people were trying to go to work. So that was tough. But other than that, other than the hour and a half commute this morning, it was great. Uh, and I feel good. I feel ready to roll. Casey? I, I woke up at like 6, 5.30 this morning Whoa. to thunderstorms. Just kapow, kapow. Oh, see, I love that. I, I sleep through that like a baby. I, I would normally would, but then like all the animals started getting all restless. Oh. There was meowing. There was howling all carrying around. It was just a big old – Big old hullabaloo early this morning. But other than that, I didn't have any troubles getting in here. It was actually, it was pretty, pretty quiet. There was no rain because there was just, just this dead period here for like yeah. an hour. And now it's about to pick back up here in a minute. So we'll see where we're at here in a couple hours. Casey's got some riz going today. He's, he does. he's got some nice pants. He's got a nice shirt on. He's, he's got ready his to hair go. figured out. I I'm mean, ready. this guy is, he's well put together today. I, I, I was over there just. Just taking it all in for a minute. I mean, sometimes, Casey, you come in, you look like you're a, you're an abandoned eighth grade gym teacher, <laughs> and then there's days like today where I'm like, you know what? Maybe maybe you aren't. Maybe maybe yeah. Alex isn't out of your league. You know, I I really tried today. That was the thing. Is so there's some days where I put no effort in, and I will admit that. And you will notice. You will notice on air that sometimes I just don't put in a lot of effort. But today, yeah, I was very excited today. I really wanted to talk today about the Cincinnati Reds. Wow. And also the Final Four is pretty crazy, too. Yes, very. FC had a really crazy game. Um, well, and, and then, of course, all you know how I am about NFL talk and Bengals. Sure. But we're not going to get into that. Let's do a lot much. of NFL talk today. They had 700 viewers last night in the chat talking NFL only. <laughs> yeah. uh, real quick, we've got a couple of super chats, or I believe they're member chats. They member are, chats. yeah. So Justin says, uh, and this is a very appropriate chat. Don't think too much into it. Six golden months. I wonder if the showers will be golden today. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Mo thought. says, having a YouTube chat decide an employee's fate is like betting the shift, saving you a run. Mm. Reed, I love you, but we got work to do. I'll be there at 1 p.m. to hold your microphone. <laughs> we also got a $10 super chat. You want to read that one, Ellie? Yeah, Chai Town says, it's so awesome watching y'all grow. It's a privilege watching a business grow from the beginning. Definitely helps me stay motivated in my business. Let me get a free ad. LOL. Shout out to Chi Town Real Estate. That's right. Chicago land area. Yeah. Seems like the demos. Uh, the demos. Not I mean, great. I hope it. I hope it works out. Obviously, he's a big, big time Cincinnati guy. Chicago land real estate. Um, just so happens to be we're in Cincinnati. He's in Chicago. I don't know. Speaking of Chicago, we have some headlines that we're going to get to today. Sure. Um, Elliot. Yeah. You have a plethora of things to discuss. Yeah. One of them happens to be in Chicago. The Chicago Cubs had a home opener yesterday. They did. So the Cubs played a baseball game yesterday. Unfortunately for everybody, they were playing the lowly Rockies. The worst team. Uh, and Casey, they, they welcomed out this, this Major League Ball Club onto the field with a, with a really cool pyrotechnic show. Uh, you had to be there to experience it. It, it didn't look – it didn't uh, – I don't think it translated on TV. Um, but here's the thing about it. It's for the fans. They do this for the fans. They've got a lot of money up there, and this was a million-dollar production they yeah. put on. So here we go. Here's the I mean, Cubs. I'm pretty, I'm pretty jealous of this. I'm yeah, I, this is how we should walk into work every day. Yeah. yeah. So we got there. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Is it a fireworks? Is that? Is that 
that it? <laughs> that might be it. I mean, that's the one. Look at this. Look at the Oh. Fire. Well, I mean, let's be honest. If they could have just spruced that up a bit, sure. maybe lined up like nine more of those yeah. right down the runway. Yeah. Maybe made the runway like um, diagonal instead of like a 90 degree cut there. I'm not sure what that was. That, no. looked like, that looked like a video game. You know, when they, when they don't have a lot of developers and they're like, hey, we got to get this game out, man. We've been working on it way too long. They're like, what about what about like natural motion of, of human beings? They're like, nah, don't worry about it. They're just going to go 90 degrees. Yeah, they were this giving up. This was a straight up. Straight to the left. I've never played Roblox, but that would that's 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 what I figured it would remind me of. <laughs> uh, they they win five nothing over the Rockies. The Rockies are the world's biggest joke. Uh, I believe Cody Bellinger had two RBIs, so shout out to him. Outside of that, in Major League Baseball, we have the Braves beating the White Sox nine nothing. I did see this. I didn't see it. Send it to Casey. Teams that start zero and four and score less than eight runs in their first four games. There's only been two of them. Okay. The Braves in 21 and the White Sox this year. Mm. The Braves in 21 won the World Series. The White Sox this year, we don't know. <laughs> uh, I have a hard time believing that team's ever going to win anything, but good luck to them. The Pirates, I believe they remain perfect. They beat the Nationals 8-4. to four. Orioles, Royals. Uh, Orioles got the better of the Royals there, 6-4. to four. Angels and Mike Trout. I saw Mike Trout hit a 500-foot home run yesterday. Uh, and, and their domination of the Marlins. Shout out to the Marlins. The Marlins will never be good. The Rangers, they crushed the Rays 9-3. to We have the Tigers. They was 0-0 with the Mets up until the 10th inning. Uh, Tigers hit a three-run shot and, and add two more. 5 nothing. the final there. Astros, they blank the Blue Jays 10-0. Uh, Houston gets their very first win of the season. So shout out. Uh, was that a no-hitter too? I'm just seeing it. That's a no-hitter. Yeah, yep. I didn't even First realize that. I think we're getting to the point now with these no hitters no that, hitters don't that it feels like uh, it feels like they're they're just not as cool as they used to be. It certainly is because they're more common than they've ever been in the past. But uh, I didn't even realize I didn't even realize that. I'm, I'm a baseball yeah. fan. I, I pay attention, and I had no idea that Houston had a no hitter. But good for them. Yankees they beat the Diamondbacks five two. Cardinals over the Padres six two. Uh, Mariners got the better of the Guardians five four. Red Sox beat the Athletics. Nine nothing. Speaking of the athletics, Trace. Yes. I believe, uh, and I sent this little graphic to Casey about one of their better players this uh, this season being Asturi Ruiz. Uh, I think that's how I pronounce that. If I don't, uh, I'm very sorry. He was hitting over 400. I think he led led all of the majors in pretty much every offensive category. They decided they're going to send him down. Now, uh, you can't see it on that picture there. But he was holding a wristband. He had a wristband on his wrist, as did Brent Rooker. Brent Rooker has not been sent down, but he has been benched. Both those guys were wearing wristbands of uh, the last dive bar. Yeah, the last dive bar is owned by an individual that seems like he's uh, very pro-boycott of the uh, A's ownership group. Yep. So he has been all about trying to find ways in which they can uh, stick it to the man. And... Um, Listen, I'm all for a, a good boycott. The only issue is, is that unfortunately, when you own the last dive bar, I don't know how much leverage you're ultimately going to be able to no. to be able to stop. And it's sad, but that's the truth with the A's. But they've made wristbands that are uh, the last. I think it says, I think it says like last dive baseball or something like yeah. that. And uh, they've started a campaign called Summer of Boycott. Um, and a couple of players were wearing them, weren't they, Elliot? That's right. And unfortunately, those couple of players are, are no longer contributing to the athletics because the A's have had enough of it. Not because of that, though. Remember, you got to let the, yeah. uh, I don't know sure, if you've seen right. or not, but uh, we do have a clip of uh, Mark Kotze, uh, the oh. A's manager. That's he, right. He, he, he didn't say it was because of the wristbands. It was because of other things mm. outside the wristbands. Here's Mark Kotze about the situation. Just from your perspective, I know you said you guys both talked to Ruiz sending down. Just what was kind of the message as you uh, talked to him today? Yeah, I, you know, my message for, for Essie is he's going to go down, he's going to lead off, he's going to play every day. Um, he's going to go down and dominate that, you know, that level. Um, and those are my expectations. Um, you know, he's worked really hard. He's continuing to work hard and buying in on the adjustments that we've asked him to make. And, uh, and now it's just going down and showing us that those adjustments, uh, you know, are going to lead to the out offensive output that, uh, that we're looking for from him. Why didn't you do this when the season started? Why do you wait till now? Well, I mean, we obviously claimed a new player today in Tyler Nevin. 
And uh, in terms of the roster construction, um, you know, we started the season out with Esty. Um, and we had sustained a big injury with Miguel Andujar beginning of the year, uh, which gave Esty an opportunity, obviously, to be on this team uh, to start the season. And uh, in acquiring Nevin today, um, you know, it, it uh, gives us a chance to have Esty go down and play every day, not sit here and, and um, you know, come off the bench. Uh, as he's done a couple times and uh, just give him an opportunity to go play every day and, and go down and, and really show these, these adjustments are, are going to lead to the success we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, that guy, he, uh, he played in 100-plus games last year. I think he played 130 games, led the, I, I led the league in stolen bases. And then all of a sudden, he's 25 years old, start this year off, he's hitting 429, 1,200 OPS. And, uh, oh, by the way, we're going to send him down. And we're going to send him down – uh, because he needs to work on some things. Yeah. And then on top of that, you say out loud, publicly, in the same breath, he's going to dominate down oh, there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, nothing says nothing says that you need some more work someplace than then in the next breath you say you're going to dominate somewhere. The A's are an abomination. I don't know what you do with that franchise. It seems like that's the same situation that you'd have when you open up some big cabinet and it's just got nothing but snakes in it. Just burn <laughs> the whole damn thing. Just get rid of it. I don't, I don't understand the logic either. I, I mean, clearly it's some sort of punishment for these guys for supporting uh, the boycott, I guess. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe it's, service maybe, time manipulation is what some are saying. But, again, it's all it yeah, not the right thing. That seems weird having him start the season and then magically after hitting 429, we're going to want him to go dominate even more down in AAA while the major league team loses, checks the score here, 9 to nothing yesterday. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what you do with the athletics. I don't know if there is a solution other than uh, just reset it completely. Change the name, change the logo, send them to Las Vegas and be on their way. Uh, shout out to them, though. The, it's always fun to see the, the, the poverty franchises in sports uh, just show why they're so poverty. Other than that, the Reds. The Reds win last night 6-3. to three. Andrew Abbott, solid. Five innings a third, five innings and a third. Adding, he, he gave up three hits, gave up two earned runs, struck out four. Pretty solid outing from our guy, Andrew Abbott. I, I, I was looking on X.com. A little, some people were freaking out over Andrew Abbott over the first two innings, I think. And then they cooled, they cooled down. So shout out to Andrew Abbott. Great outing for him. Uh, the bullpen was dominant following him. CES starting to find himself, adding two more hits yesterday after the walk-off home run on Easter. Uh, Spencer Steer obviously being the hero with the game-winning grand slam. I did send this to Casey as well. The announcer, the broadcaster for the uh, Phillies, or I believe that's who it was. Yeah. He said that right before, Spencer Steer had never, ever, ever hit a grand slam. Well, that's what happens when you show the graphics. So here's, here we go. No grand slam for Spencer Steer. Let's hope that continues. A 2-1. Oh. Fly ball left field pretty well hit. Merrifield going back. It is gone. A grand slam for Spencer Steer. And the Reds have busted it open here in the 10th. They're on top 6-2. to two. Tough scenes for my guy. That was John Crook. I don't know. Do you know? This is a fun thing that I get to do sometimes because I've gotten old enough now to where I can, sure. I can, uh, I can, I guess, see things that other people haven't. Do you know who John Cruck is? No idea. No idea. I have no idea who John Cruck is. Do you, would you like me to look? Wow. It up? I mean, <laughs> sometimes, man, you come into this show, you start doing things, and you just have no idea who John Cruck is. Just makes me, makes me like, what a wild thing. Looked like he was pretty good. What a wild thing. Yeah, I mean, he was really good, really good player. Um, you know, he's an all-star, rookie of the year, three-time well, all-star. Well, finished seventh in rookie of the year, buddy. You're right, finished seventh, excuse me. But he was a three-time all-star. Got some. Good for him. 25-war player. For those that care about war, hey, I mean he's good. he's a pretty good damn good player, but yeah, you've never heard of him. What a wild what a wild thing that we just found out. But final headlines. By the way, uh, we are going to practice today on being an ESPN fourteen ten wing AM Miami Valley's home to the best sports talk in Dayton. Uh, we're going to practice today. The problem is that we were supposed to go fifteen minutes. 15 yeah, that's minutes, already 15 past minutes. now. Yeah, we're way past. 
Well, yeah, they're they're, so, they're going to hate our guts. So that's, that's, that's gonna they're going to gonna hate our guts. I don't know how we're we don't do have it, to do it today. Honest. That's the good news is like we don't need to just yeah. be stupid and be like, all right, uh, we'll be back and next and uh, off the bench with Trace Fowler, fourteen ten wing AM. Yeah, that was that, we, we we can't do that. But here's the thing. We uh, we're gonna try to practice on the next segment, maybe. Wait, yeah. see if we can't keep it to fifteen minutes. Yeah, we'll keep it. To we're point. gonna have a real problem here. Yeah. We're, we're we going have... on the big wig, big time legacy media. You finally made it radio, and we were supposed to go fifteen minutes, and we sit here at twenty three minutes in on our first segment. But you know what? That's how it goes. That's how it goes. We've had a lot of stuff to talk about since we've been on here last, so maybe that's the excuse we'll make. Yeah. Any final headlines that you may have? Casey, do you want to add something? That you I, well, I was just going to say, I mean, we, we can throw it whenever. I mean, we just got to have shorter segments later yeah, on so in the show. Well, yeah, so we can throw fine. it whenever. But to be fair, Casey, you know, most times really good people in the business would, would throw it to the actual break when you finally have a nice, clean cut. You know, you're not just be like, um, oh, yeah, all right, we'll talk about the A's and uh, uh, Ruiz and Mark Costa's comments right after this on 1410 Wing AM. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we get to this, we're going to have like a four-hour radio show. But you are right. I'm just saying, hey, first time out, not off to the best start on the first segment. But well, you know what? Okay. It I, doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's spring training right now, Elliot. We're, so we're in good year. Here's the good news. I don't know how it works at 1410. I'll have to talk with Justin. When I worked for a, a radio station in this city who I won't name, yep. uh, when I worked for them, there were hosts that would, you know, I, we'd have about seven minutes of commercials. So I'd say, hey, you got to get out at 1023, whenever it was. 1023, we got to get out. And he'd go up until 1029. And he'd say, all right, deal with that. And I said, okay. So what I would do is I would move all those commercials in the back end to the front end. So then Ooh. that's that's what you do. So, But I don't know if there will be that kind of adjustment. That's the only issue. Okay. So, yes, I do have other headlines. UConn, uh, they handled Illinois pretty easily, 77-52. Again, close in the first half. Uh, they went on a 30-0 run. 30-0 run. Yeah, we're talking about the men, correct? Men. This is the men. Yeah, I don't uh, want to get that is, confused. And this, is, and this is preposterous. They're just, they're just the best team maybe of all time. Maybe the best team ever assembled. They're, they're the Avengers Endgame uh, superhero squadron up against Thanos because they cannot be stopped at all. Alabama, they beat Clemson 89-82. Sears led the way, 23 points, and was 7 from 14 from beyond the arc. I was watching that game, and that was preposterous. They just made every single shot from beyond the arc. Purdue, they kind of took care of Tennessee. It was pretty close. It was a close game, good game. ED dropped 40 points, added 16 rebounds. He also, I believe, was 14 for 22 at the free throw line, which is absolutely absurd. I think Mr. Mo said it on Twitter the other day. I think there's going to there's gonna be a problem when DJ Burns is on him. They're going to foul DJ Burns out in the first half. That's what's going to happen. Because I think DJ Burns is a better player, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, so, and that leads me to DJ Burns. He scored 29 points in their victory over Duke. And if I'm going to be honest, the second half wasn't really close. They just absolutely destroyed him. Filipowski fouled out with like five minutes left. Uh, 13 for 19 shooting DJ Burns. And by the way, you ever have fun watching a guy play basketball? That guy just smiled the whole way through. And that second half, he literally would go score a basket and come down and laugh at Duke. It was one of the more fun games, more enjoyable games I've seen. Uh, for all those people like me who complained about the, the first round not being as exciting, it's good seeing a, an 11 seed get to the final four here. An 11 seed who, by the way, and again, I'm not going to credit myself, but there should be a little bit of credit thrown my way because some are saying I gave them this victory. I gave them the past seven victories. It started against Virginia when Nick Kirby and shot quality was all over Virginia. They said Virginia was going to win by 100. There was no doubt. And you look at the, the halftime graphic, Virginia should have been up by 40. But I said, no, Nick Kirby, I'm not going to ride with you. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to go with DJ Burns. That kid makes a miracle three-point shot. They beat Virginia, and it's starting this miracle run uh, absolutely preposterous. They were 17 and 14, 17 and 14, uh, early March. And then, then they've just won out. So good for them. Final four, uh, other bear, uh, basketball, men's basketball news, Victor Locken, uh, no longer a Bearcat, no yeah. longer a Bearcat. Mm -hmm. He will be playing overseas from now on. We thank Victor Locken for his service. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, uh, but he looked great against Stetson. He looked great against Stetson. Jizzle James, he announced he is coming back to Cincinnati. Uh, shout out to Jizzle. He proved he was a star towards the end of this, uh, this year as Day Day Thomas went out with an injury. He started as point guard and he was dominant going to the NFL real quick, real quick. I know nobody likes to talk about the NFL anymore. Vontae Davis, unfortunately, uh, has died. He was found yesterday at 35 years old. Vontae Davis was a legend. Uh, you, you might remember him from retiring at halftime 
when he played for the Bills. Uh, you might remember when he was with the Dolphins and, and uh, Hard Knocks recorded him. Um, I forget which coach that was, but they traded him away. And his reaction, his first reaction was, can I call my grandma? It was very sweet. Yeah, right, in the, right at the very beginning of it, too. And they, yeah. they obviously had to say, hey, let's take care of some business first. Let's talk through this, and then you can call your grandma. Um, that was a very, very cool clip of Hard Knocks. The other clip that, uh, that we'll run right now, if you've not seen it, I think there may be some slight language here. So if you have kids around, earmuffs. But uh, Shady McCoy was on Instagram Live discussing Vontae Davis quitting at halftime. And it's hilarious. Here it is now it's a shady i just i'm out there shady and this shady, you shady mccool you can't call the dog it's time to go it's a young man's game yeah. that's how he talk <laughs> hey but dog but dog but they said no nah, man I, I, when he told me was like, we, we we came like a three and out he just made he just had just made like a big big stop on third down he had put his fist up got the crowd pumping everything so we got to the sideline you know what i mean offense going going so we about to punt coach was like y'all get ready he was like yeah, I'm done, young boy. <laughs> I look, I was like, hold on. He was like, yeah, this is my last go round. So I looked at him, I was like, uh, what you mean? Like, this your last, this, oh, this going to be your last year? He was like, nah, this going to be my last game. I'm done, man. <laughs> he said, say that boy, say But they said, I'm, I'm done, young Trey, man. Y'all boys, God, this is your man's game, man. I, I just ain't got it no more, Yo. man. Hey, I'm thinking the whole coach. time. Like, why the fuck would you go through OTAs and camp and you go do this shit? <laughs> Yo, yeah. I, already, I already told Coach. He said, yeah, I'm done, man. I'm done. Coach said, wait, <laughs> oh, all right, you done this series? All right, just come and let's see. He said, no, nah, Coach. I'm <laughs> done. I mean, I'm finished. I'm finished. <laughs> hey, look, my dog, my dog started start taking this tape off. You know he wore the wrist tape off. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. He took it off. He took it off. He started taking it off. So, man, hey, nah, nah. We're going to talk about the week before, though, Shay. You know, what? we was in Baltimore the first game of the season. So anyway, if that can't make if that can't make you smile or laugh, then I don't know what will. But uh, some people, their own special people. Vontae Davis is one of those guys. Shout out to him. Uh, very sorry. Uh, Rishi Rice. He was involved in a multi vehicle crash on Saturday. I believe he was racing somebody. I don't. I, I believe yeah. that's the report I saw. That's he is cooperating with the police. Well, that's good. Maybe don't race people on roads where pedestrians are trying to drive. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, speaking of Kansas City, he is currently meeting with the Kansas City Chiefs uh, to per- perhaps join Isaiah Pacheco, Casey. Do you have any thoughts on that backfield? Uh, that doesn't move me. Pacheco is the guy, right? I mean, Well, he is until they draft another ninth rounder. And, yeah. that's, how, and that's how running yeah. backs work. So shout out to Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, and also J.K. Dobbins. I don't know. if When was the last time he played a full season? Ever? I don't think he has ever played full season. That's unfortunate. Bengals have started uh, their top 30 prospect visits with uh, defensive tackle LSU Mason Smith and Ole Miss uh, Dijon Anthony, to name a couple. So, Yeah, they're just starting their, their rookie visits. So. How about that? Uh, FCC News, they remain undefeated. Love that. As they draw. Nice. <laughs> Please tell me it was 0-0. Zero zero. No. no, they scored a goal. One against to one. Charlotte FC, one to one. Damn. And FC scored an extra time. Yeah, it was. It was a pretty goal. sweet goal. Yeah, pretty... I mentioned. I yeah, it's in my notes here. The goal was sweet. Yeah, yeah. I, I got it right here. If you want to see it, I'd love to see it. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go. I guess they didn't think it was going to happen. It was a great save. So shout out to FCC. Uh, they are now what is it, KC four zero and three or something? They're three and three. Three zero and three. Yeah. All right. I still need to get to a game. Um, are the ticket prices? Are the ticket prices to get into to? Um, and now I know other stations around town wouldn't do this, but I will formally call it TQL Stadium. I know you would say no free ads, but you know when someone pays for the rights of a stadium, I think it's fair to, to fair to fair to mention their name. But TQL Stadium, how much does it cost to get in? Do we know. Uh, I think it's probably going to be like, just to get in, it's probably going to be like 50 bucks. Yeah. A little, well, that's a good news. That. Well, here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to go, I'm going to get on the game time app and I am going to yes. purchase my tickets. Why? Yeah. Because if you download the game time app, sure. You can use the code OTB. That's O T B. We make it very simple for this show. You know, we don't have to spell it out because no. it's actually just the name of the show. 
OTB. You can use that code, get $20 off your first purchase. And I'm going to do that because then I can ultimately go to the game for like 30 bucks yes. if my math's right. Yes. 50 yeah. minus 20, 30. Sure. Pretty good deal. Got to find bad. some parking situation. Maybe you take the rails around. Rails drop you off there, right? I think so. Uh, I've never actually seen mm. the rails. Casey is that. not what we would call a, a city man. That's he right. comes from the lovely cities of Blanchester, where they don't have <laughs> rails. We have, we have horse and buggy. Yeah, that's right. And they, they have cows until they don't. They've got but a couple this horses. is uh, one more time. You can use the code OTB to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, and you will also be supporting us. For those that think that I don't like ad reads, what do you think about that? That's also, right. Um, we will do our very best. Justin did say in the chat that, that there's some manipulation there possible. Here's the thing, though. Um, just saying, starting next show, these headline segments, they can't be 40 minutes long. But I will say, best headlines you've ever done. Wow. Thank you. Casey helped me with them. So shout out to Casey, too. Well, there you go. Maybe UConn. Casey. UConn. They held on to beat USC last night in the women's tournament. They advanced to the final four. Shout out to them. Uh, I didn't watch any of that game, but I just wanted to mention it. Uh, Angel Reese. I did watch this one. Angel Reese scored 17 points, adds 20 boards in a 94-87 loss to Iowa. Caitlin Clark on the other side had 41 points and 12 assists. Mm -hmm. How about Caitlin Clark? Uh, she's legit. We'll talk about her. Why not now? Or a professional would say those were the headlines sponsored by Headline Sportswear. Um, wow. Yeah. Big is that, but is that true? Um, yeah. Very okay. Very much true. All right. Very much true. Okay. Yeah. But uh, here's the thing. We're going to talk about Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese. Was Angel Reese just being a big baby last night on the stage? That and more on 1410 Wing AM. Your home for sports talk in the Miami Valley. All right. We're back on YouTube here. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, for those that are wondering what the heck is going on. We're going to try to, to replicate this today because if we don't do it now, then we'll never do it. And then all of a sudden when it's go time, we're not going to be prepared. We're, we have no chance of ever being successful. But we are going to cut up the audio and send it to the obviously the radio station. And we got to have a little bit of a, of a break there. But the truth is we're on YouTube. So we, we talk about sports literally two straight hours most days in here. I don't think that's ever going to change. Unfortunately, on the radio, we only get an hour and a half. Well, no, it is, it's two hours, but it's an, but hour, it's and an hour and a half of content. content. Some would say this is harder. I'm not saying I'm not suggesting for a single second that the radio is difficult, but you know, ultimately, an hour and a half of content, yeah, not as difficult as two hours. But the good news is, is today we have a lot of content. That's right. That's the good news. So now I'm going to welcome us back in off the radio. All right, welcome back in to Off the Bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. I'm Trace Fowler, joined as always with Casey McAllister and Elliot Rearing. Hey guys, listen. Uh, this is this is. Let's face it. I don't know how many times in our life women's sports are going to dominate headlines, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just being real. But the top headline nationally for the last day or day or two has been Caitlin Clark, this Iowa Hawkeyes basketball team, and then you factor in Angel Reese, who's become a little bit of the heel. And then yesterday, for those that may have not seen it, Angel Reese took the podium after their loss against the Hawkeyes – and she had this to say. I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things, and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and, like, not be there for them. So I just want them to always just know, like, I'm still a human, like, all this has happened since I won the national championship, and I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, and, but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me, and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but – Keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. One lesson that you eventually learn in your life is that you can't have it both ways. 
you can't lead something on and play it play it one way and then in the next breath complain about the repercussions of the thing that you very much created let's not act like everyone's out to get everybody in certain situations in certain areas yes has the media mis misconstrued misplaced judgment on certain people yes no one's naive to that but to sit here and suggest now, after the fact, after you played heel, after you did the wave, you did the face thing, you, you, tapped, your, you tapped your ring finger when you beat Caitlin Clark last year, you, then you parlay that into this idea that you're a kind of a, a bad boy mantra and you come out and you, you have a lot of uh, disparaging things that you kind of say from time to time in regards to certain areas of, of, of competition. And then, it, it, again... I don't know how deep to go into this well because ultimately I don't know how many people genuinely care in the first place, if we're being honest. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Angel Reese. She's a great player, but she's not and never was the center of attention and the reason that there was any hoopla in the beginning. Caitlin Clark was the straw that stirred the drink. And she will continue to be the straw that serves the drink. Why? Because there's entertainment that comes with her. I'm not suggesting for a second that Reese isn't a good player. Yeah, but she's not a generational player. She doesn't do anything transcendent on the basketball floor that makes you think, wow, I got to tune into that. That's all it is. And one thing that has been proven 100% over the last two or three weeks is that if you have entertaining sports, if you show some type of thing that, that, that makes people attracted to be able to watch something because it's entertaining first. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what sex you are. It doesn't matter any of it. People will watch. Last night had to have unbelievable ratings. Why? Because there was entertainment involved. I have those ratings for you if you want them. What are they? 12.6 million viewers tuned in last night. That is the most by far for a women's college basketball game. And it's not complicated. You have a generational talent, and you have an unbelievable storyline. Kim Mulkey, the head coach of LSU, not notably loved, but she's flamboyant. She's a little bit of a heel. She's got a personality to her. You add in Angel Reese in the way that she obviously became a popular figure. And you have something to talk about. You have something to watch. They proved last night that people don't watch sports because of anything other than entertainment. And if you can be entertaining and you can make it worth watching, people will watch. All the narratives that want to get dragged out, all the different things that people want to point to and say this is why people watch, this is why people don't watch, it all comes down to what kind of merit you have in regards to entertainment. And the truth is, is that last night was entertaining. Shout out to both of those teams. They gave a, a – they, they answered the bell. I watched a majority of that game. Was it the cleanest basketball of all time? No, it wasn't. But you know what? I took it for what it was. I watched it. I enjoyed it. But that was disappointing to see after the fact. And I get that there's emotions involved. Maybe your college career just ended. You're upset. But that reminded me kind of of the, of the proverbial bully in a way. The one that spouts off all the time and nobody really sticks up to him. And then at some point somebody sticks up to the bully and the bully shows their true character and their true colors and they run back. Again, I understand Angel Reese may have been upset. But you can't sit here and say that you've been victimized and all these things when you brought a lot of it on yourself. And I don't want to go too down far down the rabbit hole, but the whole sexualizing thing, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go and, 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 and scroll through Angel Reese's socials to figure out why are you being sexualized? Could it have been any of your own doing? Possibly. Could you take any self-responsibility? I'm not here to defend men that do grotesque things certainly but let's just take a little bit just a little bit of what we would call responsibility for our own actions i don't know i also think that there's probably here in a short amount of time um 
we'll see what kind of star power that Angel Reese possesses in regards to her basketball abilities and how long that will continue on. Because I know one thing, Caitlin Clark's moving on to the final floor. She'll continue to pull in the ratings because Caitlin Clark is a generational talent and she can shoot the ball from anywhere. And guess what? People that watch basketball like that. You take anything away from that game last night? I don't know if you got a chance to see it, gentlemen. But um, I wouldn't call it a, a, a perfect game. We have um, Paul Fritchner joining us at the top of the hour at 11.15. He'll discuss the final four, and we'll see what his take is on perhaps the game last night. I'm sure he was locked in. I thought it was an overall entertaining game. Wasn't the cleanest amount of basketball. I did start questioning if Caitlin Clark had one more great player on her team. And I'm not saying she doesn't have any okay, good players. But if she had one more great player on their team, I don't think that they could be stopped. I would agree. I would agree. I was watching the game last night. And again, this is shout out to Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. I give them both credit for it. Because I'm not watching the game if Angel Reese isn't in that game. I, I, she's a very big part of the reason that I watched. And it was really the first. I watched the entirety of that game. Uh, it was. I haven't watched a ton of women's college basketball. I'll be honest. And I watched the entirety of the game. I thought it was a fun game. I thought it was fun to see to see those girls uh, shoot from it looked like thirty five feet, and and just swish everything. It looked in the especially in that first quarter. The first quarter was incredible. Iowa legit didn't miss for the first ten minutes or for the first seven minutes, and then the last seven minutes or how many of those however long those quarters are, LSU didn't miss. It was, it was back and forth all the way. Fourth quarter, obviously, Iowa, Iowa got the better of them. Uh, and Caitlin Clark's a beast. So, and, and Angel Reese is good. I, I will say this. Angel Reese is 6'3", I think. 6'3", is a, is a, is a pretty decent size advantage uh, in, in, in basketball, especially women's college basketball. So I, I thought she would have been a little bit better last night, but that's fine. It was a great game. It was a great game. 12.6 million people tuned in for that on ESPN. Shout out, shout out to those girls. Yeah, we'll see what ultimately it ends up happening. But, um, you know, I, I get people might not agree with what I had said, but that's fine. You can have your opinion. I'll have mine. And uh, we'll move on because that's the beautiful thing about living in America, the United States of America. There was some controversy there, but we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> final four. Yeah, I mean. Final four. Wonder why nobody likes you. And you do controversial things time and time again. Seems really weird. It's almost like you play with fire and then you want to complain that you got burnt. That's here nor there. Summer DJ Sands. Burns. DJ Burns is a beast. I don't know how much of that game you watched. I watched the entirety of it. Phenomenal. Absolute. That guy's a, a menace. And there are times when, when Burns, like, he'll, he'll go down there, he'll work on a post move, and, and then he'll just tank a guy in and, he, and, he'll, and, and he'll put it in the hoop. And then, like, the next possession, it's very funny. He, he walks down the court and stops at half court, lets him play defense so he can get an extra jump on the offensive side of the basketball. He, t he gets his little rest in. He's very funny. Uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it, and I do think there's a chance that Burns can upset Purdue. I, if there was one guy, really? one man who could upset that team, it's going to be Burnsy. I think it's a terrible matchup for, for NC State, unfortunately, right? It's like Bur Burns is, the, is, the, is, again, to continue to use the phrase, the straw that, that stirs the drink. But, unfortunately, they have somebody there that I think is going to match up with him very, very well, and obviously an Edie, and it takes away that. They're not going to have to double. Um, at least I, we'll see. If they, if they do have to double, then it, then it makes what NC State does relatively uh, attainable again, which is throw the ball into Burns, double, kick out, find an open shooter, score the basketball. The issue is if you throw the ball into Burns and Edie's able to dominate him and or stay in front of him and make sure you don't have to double, then it turns into a different, different dynamic. Same could be said, however, the opposite way. Because let's face it, Purdue does the very same thing. They throw the ball into Edie, they collapse, they kick it out, and the question is, is whether or not one of those guards can hit a three or an outside shot. And if Purdue starts hitting, like I said before, outside shots, they're almost impossible to beat. And I think that they could, I think they have the best chance, and I don't, I don't think that's really all that debatable now based off who's left in the tournament, but they have the best chance to knock off UConn because UConn clearly at this point looks like they're not just a, not just a good team, not just a great team, but one of the great teams of all time. But that doesn't always mean that you win the championship, so we'll, we'll still continue to watch. Do you, do you think for a single second that Alabama and or NC State can win the national championship? NC State cannot. Alabama, I think it, Alabama offers a good chance to beat um, 
UConn. I think Alabama can if, – if they can hit threes at the rate that they did against Clemson, yeah, they can, they can beat UConn. Uh, I, NC State really has no chance. Uh, I, in my, I just don't, I don't see a world where it happens. UConn's too damn good. Uh, if, the, if they were to somehow upset Purdue, I think it would be a short game against UConn. I think they'd be in it for the first like three minutes. DJ Burns would take a couple mid-range, and then it would be over. I think Alabama has a sizable chance. Uh, if, they were, if, if, if they can beat UConn, then I think Alabama wins it all. I think the, obviously the winner is going to be uh, UConn or Alabama. I don't think it's going to be Purdue. I don't think it's Purdue or NC State. Just from what I've seen. And again, Edie's good. Edie's, Edie's great. But Edie does get the benefit of getting every single foul call. I don't know if I don't you I don't think know. So? Yeah. Yes. I don't know, man. I, you don't, I feel you like don't it think goes so? both ways. I, I feel like it goes both ways. I think there's some times where he gets kind of fouled, he gets pushed around because he's so big though, it doesn't appear that he's getting fouled, and then therefore he doesn't get it called on him. But then I do think that there are times where he's awkward, I think is the word that I'd like to use. He's just awkward and he flails around from time to time and it makes it look like he's being pushed and or fouled when he's really not. So I think it goes both ways. Now, whether or not it's even, I've not watched Edie play enough to feel like it's even. I do know that the, the X.com, X.com has a very significant amount of people that are off the Edie train. They cannot stand this guy for whatever reason. And I think it largely stems around the idea that he gets all the calls. Well, I also think it stems from a post-game interview that he did where he said, everybody's writing me off. Rick Barnes wrote me off when I was uh, coming, out, coming out of high school. Yeah. He, he saw my tape. He didn't like it. Buddy, you're seven feet four inches. You can't play the you can't play the oh woe is me. Nobody respected me. You can't do it when you're legitimately taller than every single person on earth. You can't do it. And I think that's where a lot of it comes from. And he did it again. Uh, he did it in two separate interviews. He did it on the court uh, post game. Then he did it uh, in in the media room post game, where he basically said everybody's written us off. Everybody's counted us out. You're seven foot four. You're a, you, you've been the top three team in the country all season long. Nobody's writing you off. They're just kind of annoyed. They're tired of it. They want something to change. That's what's happening. We'll talk about why I have no problem with what Edie said and why Elliot's wrong right after this on 1410 <laughs> Wing AM. All right. Welcome back. You're listening to Off the Bench on 1410 Wing M, presented by United Dairy Farmers. Elliot, you just said before break that you think that uh, what Edie said during his postgame press conference, which was everybody overlooked me, uh, blah, blah, blah. He, I seen all the posts. He's seven foot tall. He's going to the IMG Academy. How could he possibly be overlooked? Maybe overlooked wasn't the right set of words that he used. I would say it's the wrong set of okay, words. Okay, that's fine. But what he was trying to suggest was is he did not receive he did not receive scholarship offers from all of these schools. He got looked at, but he did not get an offer. Clearly Barnes took a look at 80. He was very raw, I'd assume, when he was in at the IMG Academy. Nobody would ever suggest that if they knew that Zach Eady was going to become what he ultimately became, they would not have given him a scholarship, clearly. But this is what athletes do. You again, as I said before. You can't have it both ways. You can't want athletes to be competitive, have, a, have, have some kind of um, warrior-type demeanor, and then just all of a sudden forgive as soon as something happens. Edie has been holding on to the fact that, one, they lost last year in the first round, and he was a big, large part of why people were making fun of them, that he was on a team that got made fun of. They have gotten bounced, I think, out of the tournament the last three or four years by double-digit seeds. So all of this builds up. It builds up. It builds up. builds up. Zach Edie last night in his press conference had this to say, and I'll tell you why. I kind of loved it. This is where you run the clip, Casey. I get to I get to pay him back. Like there was there were so many coaches that that looked over me. Um, like you could name a program, I can name a coach that looked over me. Um, the Tennessee Rick Barnes is a great coach, but he he was in a bunch of our practice, looked over me. Like it's kind of been the story of my life. People have doubted me. People look past me and can't do that anymore. I get to I get to pay him. People have looked past him. People have doubted me, but you can't do it anymore. This is and the that, one. This is, the is, one that there, is I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I think that people probably question whether or not he was going to be a good enough player to be serviceable in college when he was in high school. To be clear, nobody's suggesting that now. 
That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about when he was in high school, there were people like Rick Barnes who came to their practice, seen what he had to offer, and decided, you know what, I'm not going to offer him a scholarship. And when he says he wanted to pay him back, he's talking about Painter, the guy that did take a chance on him, the guy that wanted to give him a full scholarship, and ultimately it worked out in Painter's, obviously, favor. But I don't see that – I don't – I don't take it as, 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 as worldly disrespectful. The very first thing he said right before he mentioned Rick Barnes was what? Rick Barnes is a great coach, but he overlooked me. I got a question for you. If Rick Barnes walked in the gym or Rick Barnes went and watched Edie play, call it one, twice, three times, who cares, and decides he's not going to give a scholarship to him, what would you call that, Elliot? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm just saying if, you're, if we're going to call out Angel Reese for kind of walking back a take, making that victim feeling, I think you have to do it for ED2 here. Okay, well, that's, what, that's what, what I would do. But, 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 okay, there's a clear difference. He's not crying in the pes, press conference no, about – he won. Huh? He won. Okay, and if he lost, he lost last year in the 16th uh, – against a 16th seed. Do you know anything that he said last year? I would, have to go, I would have to go look it up. You don't know because he didn't say anything, anything crazily controversial. I mean, the ultimate thing, what I'm saying is, is that, you, you, yes, if you, want, if you wanted him to talk like that before the game, okay, fine. If that's what you, you wanted him to come out before the game started and say that, that Rick Barnes overlooked me, I'm going to go show them. Again, I, I don't see as a competitor, I don't see there being that big of an issue with what he had said. Now, I don't, if you, if you think that he was being disrespectful to, to, to Barnes, okay, maybe so. But again, we're talking about a guy that was a punching bag for a full year because they lost to a 16 seed. And guess what? I'm not, I'm not uh, um, young enough to, not, to forget that just this year, before the tournament, there were people in this chat and in this office that were doing what? Oh, anybody per, per, per Purdue. Oh, anybody but Purdue. Don't let me pick Purdue. That's what you all did. And guess what? Here he is, sitting two games away from winning the national championship. You got anything to say about it? Uh, I'm going to be right because uh, they are not going to beat UConn. And okay. That's all, and that's all so that you're going to hang your hat on the fact that they can't beat UConn. I, I would love it. Gotcha. I, I would. I would love it. I would absolutely adore it if they were somehow lose to NC State, and this would be the fourth or fifth consecutive year losing to a double-digit seed. That would be very funny to me. Uh, and that's what I'm cheering for. I think. I think Purdue is the villain. Uh, UConn, despite everything that they've done this year, and they have dominated everybody, every single team in the country, they've just destroyed on a national level. They're still somehow not the villain. You, s still Purdue is the villain, and that makes me, that makes me happy. That makes, that, makes me, that makes me laugh. And no, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Zach Eady can uh, play the victim here. I, when you're nine feet tall, you play for the best, uh, or the best high school basketball club team in the world, whatever he was at IMG Academy, whatever that's called. Right. Uh, when you do that, you are not an underdog. You are the favorite. You, you, you are respected. That, that goes into all of it. And it just does show, if you're going to say anybody's doubting you, the NBA is doubting you because they're saying you're not good enough. So maybe that's, maybe that's what he's talking about. If that's the case, maybe it is true. I, I personally, and again, I don't know how long we're going to talk about Zach Eady and the logic of what he meant. I just can't follow the logic of playing the victim card when all he suggested was, is his motivation was that people passed up on him and decided not to give him a scholarship. Seems pretty self-explanatory to me. If you had a coach... I, I guess my question would be, J.J. McCarthy, is he not allowed to complain about Ohio State? Not giving him a scholarship? Is he, is, is he in trouble now for saying that? Because he's doing the exact same thing. He came out and said, you know what? I mean, yeah, there was a little extra motivation. Because why? I got passed on by Ohio State. I wanted to go to Ohio State. And they didn't want me. And now I'm sitting on the other side of it, and I'm smiling. That's essentially what Zach Eady did yesterday. Zach Bar or Zach Barnes, excuse me. Rick Barnes walked into my practice, decided, you know what? You're not good enough to play at Tennessee. You, we don't want you. That's essentially what it is. Turns around, scores 40 points against him. Against him. With 16 boards. 16 boards. 40. He went 40 and 16 against a guy that decided, you know what, I don't think he's going to be good enough to play for our program. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And when you win, you're able to talk that, you're able to talk that smack. So that, Let that, me say this. If Zach Eady were to lose, he's not allowed to go in the next press conference and start crying about how he's been, he's been you know, uh, a victim of something. Then at that point he loses me. Is that fair? That's I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. 
Uh, and, and we'll see. I again, Zach Eady. I don't think. Do you think he's an NBA player? No, I don't think. He no, is I either. don't because I've watched NBA players and they're all unbelievably talented. And they, and that's just that doesn't mean, that doesn't take anything away from Zach Eady that he's not an NBA player. There's a lot of good college players that ultimately never work out in the NBA. It happens every single year. And in fact, there's a lot of guys that you thought were going to work out in the NBA and they still don't work out in the NBA. So I don't. The NBA is the most exclusive, in my opinion. Uh, professional sport that there is. That includes all of them. The amount of talent and athleticism and ability you have to have to play in the NBA is so much so much more difficult to become a part of that group than it is all the other professional groups. And they're all hard, don't get me wrong. Making any professional you know, team, if you will, is incredibly difficult. But the NBA, by far, in my opinion, is the most difficult. Uh, DJ Burns, I just want to add this little side note. That guy is going to be tearing up LA Fitnesses. He's going to be tearing. He's going to be tearing up every YMCA gym, every adult men's league there is. You're going to walk into the gym, and DJ Burns is going to look. Maybe he might be a little bit heavier. Speaking of which, we'll talk about does he have an NFL future? Some are asking. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying he's going to he's going to walk into the gym, and he doesn't even need to change his game. He could he could play like that till he's 60. Just just pure athleticism. To be honest, some people are going to laugh at me for saying that. But that kid's unbelievably athletic. 100%. I, he, I, he was making mid-range jumpers yesterday. Mid-range. Like, and almost borderline three-pointers. And he probably wanted a couple of them. So, I, yeah, I, I think that kid's awesome. I hope he gets the NIL money that uh, Golke got from Oakland. I hope he's getting those same deals right now because that would be electric. Give him the uh, – what, what's, what's that insurance thing? Uh, I, I forget them. No free ads. Doesn't matter. Uh, but whoever that insurance company that's sponsoring uh, Golki, I want you to go over to Burns and go get him a go get him a bag right now. That's fair. That guy is that guy is the story of this tournament. One hundred percent. That is fair. All right. Uh, when we come back, we're going to discuss if UConn has any chance in the world to lose in this tournament, and if you would wager, how much would you wager on UConn to win the national championship? We'll talk about that and more on fourteen ten Wing AM, your home for sports talk in the Miami Valley. All right, we're going to do uh, ad reads on this show because that's how we're going to do it. It's 11 o'clock. I've been, I've been ridiculed time and time and time and time again on this show because I don't love ads. And the truth is, is I love ads. I love United Dairy Farmers. I love Encore Technologies. And I love Pawnee Water. I went to UDF last night. And uh, I went to UDF this morning. Did you? Shout out UDF. There's a UDF. Speaking of which, UDF, I don't know if you know. What? Uh, I don't know if you know. Oh. But they have like their own bakery. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they restock the shelves every single morning. Are you a big donut guy before we get in the ad reads? Uh, I like if if I like a glazed donut and All I right. like I like donut. and I like the cinnamon. What, what's your favorite donut? We'll do that and then we'll go to ad reads with Casey. Okay, so I like glazed number one and then I like the the cinnamon twist one. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I love those. those well, are you got to pick one because your favorite means. All right, the top well then I'm one. gonna go cinnamon twist. Cinnamon twist. The, the cinnamon, All right, the, cinnamon twist. I like the. I think it's uh, the uh, Bavarian cream. I think is the name of it. I don't. I should know maybe since it's my like favorite. A Bavarian but I'm pretty. Pretzel? Uh, it's not, a, it's not, it's like, uh, some are going to say Boston cream, but I, I don't, I think it's a different thing. I could be completely wrong by the way. And I could get made fun of for that. I don't know, but I do know what I'm looking for when I walk in for the specific. Now you got me thinking pretzel, uh, for the specific <laughs> donut that I like. Casey, what's your favorite? And then uh, let us know some ad reads. Well, what's crazy is Elliot and I have the fa- same favorite one, cinnamon yeah. twist. Wow, I love the cinnamon twist. Two peas and, in a pot and, over there. And I, I also like glazed a lot, too. Those, those would be my top two. But anyways, the Bengals, Reds, Bearcats report is brought sure. to you by – FCC. Yeah, FCC, all the, the major sporting – teams around here in Cincinnati is brought to you by Encore Technologies. Encore Technologies provides IT solutions for a data centered world with the suite of services for mobile computing to desktop, desktop to data, data center, center, supporting both centralized, centralized and work from home computing models. modules to improve efficiency and productivity. productivity. Is this going on the radio? No. No. Okay. This part isn't going. Okay. Uh, Path to innovation begins here. Visit Encore.tech. And let me tell you about this lovely bottle of water right here. Can I say real mm-hmm. quick before you continue? I was listening to, it was the Bearcats on the radio, uh, on a radio station who I won't name. And Dan Horde was doing an exact ad read that you do. I think you do it better. <laughs> I think you do that Encore ad read better than Dan does. Wow. Thank you, Elliot. How about that? that? That's, very, that's very special. Thank you. That is and special, better, isn't it? Be- better than Dan Horde? Wow. 
I'm going to keep that one up here for a while. Uh, <laughs> Pawnee Water, made right here in Hamilton, Ohio. Uses natural limestone filtration, unlike the artificial processing that other brands use. The result is a healthy alkaline water, and some say the best tasting water in the world. Visit Pawnee Water at P-A-H-H-N-I water.com to see where you can buy this great tasting water. And then we already mentioned them earlier in the show. It's your favorite ticketing app, the Game Time app. Use code OTB to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. That's code OTB to get $20 off your first purchase. I haven't quite used it yet for the Reds tickets yet. I'm going to. I'm going to use that code to get in uh, get in some cheap t- cheap seats for the Reds yep. games coming up. Um, Trace brought up using it for some FC game tickets. Why not? You're going to be able to see exactly where you sit. It's just two clicks away. Boop, boop. You got your tickets. And, uh, boop, boop. yeah, boop, boop. Just like uh, that. We're going to talk about the Reds later on. I had a friend. His name is Andy. I won't give his last name out. He was at uh, the Reds game on Sunday on Easter. Murray. And he had very good tickets. He had diamond seats front row. Ooh. So you could see him on oh, the t- so you could nice. So you could see him on the TV. He's never been in those seats before. Oh, yeah. That's what they all say. And I was looking at the TV watching it, and we get to the bottom of the ninth, and he's not there. I don't see him on the TV anymore. I say, and I text him. I go, Andy, where you go? Game's not over yet. He's like, oh, we left early. You know, the, the game's over. There's no chance. As soon as Jonathan India hit the double, and, and by the way, I haven't, gone on, I haven't been on the air since Jonathan India saved our season, and so I'm sure we'll talk about it towards the end of the show. Uh, mm-hmm. But after John hit, India hit the double, I said, Andy, you better hope that they don't come back here and hit a home run because you'll never be allowed to enter the ballpark again. Surely enough, Will Benson, first pitch, boom, home run, tie game. I'm like, Andy, do you see what you've just done? Uh-huh. Look what you've done. You've left early. You missed it. And then immediately during that text, CES hits the game-winning home run. It's like, all right, you're just never allowed to come back again. Some say I did the same thing for the Bengals. The difference is they lost, so I, I came out on that side smelling like roses. How about that? <laughs> you, you came out unscathed, but you were really close to the fire. Very close. Very close. That's unfortunate for that guy. He, he missed a, a, a great memory. A very good memory. A very good memory. Craig saying you left early last year. When did you leave early? I did. I left on the Martini home run to beat the Cubs. Oh, did you yes, really? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I uh, major mistake, one in which I'll never make again. My son was unbelievably mad at me, and he, and he, and he had every right to be. It was probably one of the few times – um, where there was just incredible remorse that I had for my for my kids for not doing what's right by them, and um, yeah, I left early and it was a mistake, one in which I'll never make again. That's the good news is is, is that, that I got burnt by doing that one time. Um, I remember what happened was Alexis Diaz. I believe he he uh, the Reds were down by two. He walked like the first two guys of the inning, so it was first and second, nobody out in the yeah. top of the ninth, and I was just like, I've I've seen enough. In fact. Not to make excuses, but it was the day in which there was a doubleheader. So I had been there already for 17 innings of baseball. Think about it. Think about how that trip home went. You're oh. there for 17 innings of baseball, and you miss out on walk-off martini home run. So, yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah. So uh, I made the mistake. So uh, shout-out to your friend. And we just shout-out to Andy. Uh, and I'll never go to a game with him again. Nine first warning. I got a weather update for you. You ready for this? Okay, here we go. Do you want to get up in the steep? No, I, no, I, no. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, we got to get back on the air here soon. Nine first warning. Don't be fooled by the clearing. It's the worst thing that could happen. This allows what we call in quotes, recovery of the atmosphere, which will likely allow more severe weather to happen. So I guess the sunshine that we're seeing now is very bad. According to Steve Rowley of WCPO, no free ads. Well, Miami's getting ready to, Miami softball is getting ready to play a, a, a game here. Double header, actually. Not even yeah. a game. They're playing a double header here at uh, 1P. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And Reed, I guess at this point, chat poll question of the day before we go back on air. Oh, yeah, who won it? What, uh, uh, what, what was that? The, the final oh, no. was oh. yes by 64%. Wow. So the chat just is clearly just doesn't love our employees. That's fine. So. Got to make the money. Somehow. There is a membership called Fire Reed. <laughs> There is a membership called Fire Read. Nobody's bought that. So nobody's bought it, but this is the way I guess they thought that they could get around that. This is the loophole that they thought. I think we have three minutes before Paul gets here. Is that right, Casey? I, I suppose so. I suppose I so. Yes. I just wanted to mention one, one quick thing. I thought it was very cool how last night when you guys went live, there were over 625 people watching you guys. I thought that was very cool. Yeah. yeah. That's well, definitely a record for our um, shows. 
Yeah, I mean, listen. And some would say it's because of the NFL that led us to that. <laughs> I mean, some are saying. It was the NFL that gave you those 650 viewers live on a Tuesday, Monday night. And we had to build those viewers up somehow. At 10 p.m. No, I mean, listen, it's a humbling thing to do while we're here. Uh, the, 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 we are, uh, we're not that different than really anybody else out there that watches sports and talks about sports. Certainly we have microphones in front of our face, but the fact of the matter is, is we very much appreciate people supporting us and you guys supporting this show as well. I mean, Tom left. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. We were going to try to kind of keep the, keep the shit afloat, I think is the term we plan to use. At some point we did say, and I don't know, here relatively soon, we got to get back on air, I know, but at some point we are going to uh, remodel around here, I think, to try to kind of have a nice clean break where we can maybe have a, a different look to the show so it doesn't look so, uh, I don't know, professional. Is that the right word to use? Probably not the right word to yeah. use. But, you know, like maybe not so news anchory. I feel like I'm coming to you live to, to deliver the message of the State of the Union. All right. Um, got one super chat before we go. Yeah, last oh. super chat, and then we're going to get back into the show. $5 super chat from Chai Town Real Estate. Mm. Uh, Trace, my business will be global one day. Oh. For now, these ads are my TikTok, YouTube. These ads are for my TikTok and YouTube. It right. might make sense in my head only, though. It's all that matters. It's all that matters. Every entrepreneurial dream has started with uh, that single person's thoughts. And then from there, they try to spew those to other people and make them believe it. And then hopefully mm. at some point, you get it big enough to where everybody believes it. And then you're on to something, Chi-Town. So kudos and good luck to you. All right, welcome back in to... 1410 Wing M. This is Off the Bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. I asked you right before the break, what would you do in regards to UConn in this national championship opportunity that they have right in front of them? The current odds for the UConn Huskies to win the national championship, minus 190. Oh. I don't know if I've ever, you know, I, I've, I, of course, legally, I've done this legally, of course, gambling for quite some time. I know it's been legal in Ohio for two years, but, and that's how long I've been doing it, of course. Oh, 100%. But, you know, I've paid attention to the lines. I've paid attention to what other things were going on throughout my entire life for the most part since I've become, like, you know, 18 years of old. Um, so I don't think I've ever seen in my life minus 190 when a team has two games to play and oh, by the way, one of the games that they still could possibly have left would feature a, a national player of the year type, type player on their team and a number one seed on the other side in Purdue. They, that's what's so unfathomable to me is that not only do they have to get past Alabama, which you can make the case, okay, yeah, whatever, but still, they, they, you start to beat Alabama. And then after that, you probably have to beat a team that, that is a top four team in the country, in Purdue. And what are you left with? Minus 190. It makes you believe that if they get to the national championship, it's going to be more than minus 190. Quick question before we bring in Paul Fritchner. I'll ask him the same thing. Would you be willing to lay $200 down of your own money to win 100 on UConn in the national championship? Yes. Without question, I would, I would 100% do it. Not only I did it. I got him at plus 100 before the last round. So I, I, I'm, I'm sailing high right now. I did also make a future on Purdue. So I do have Purdue and wow. UConn. And I you got all your bases covered. That's correct. So when NC State wins, you'll be a really sad puppy. Nope, because I got that one covered too. <laughs> oh, see, so you I just don't, if Al, I'll let you say this. If Alabama wins, it'll be a disaster. All right. Fair a enough. disaster financially. Casey? Yeah, I mean – I very much am in the same camp with Elliot here. I uh, laid a little money on uh, UConn at plus 100. It was like plus 110, I think, for me at one point. So I think I have it yes. just a little bit higher. But, yeah, I'm all in on uh, UConn winning championship. I think they're the most dominant basketball team that I've seen. And I've only been following the sport for, I don't know, half my life. So There you go. All right, uh, nobody better to talk to than our guest, Paul Frischner. He is on the Sean Miller Podcast, formerly – with us and our good friend uh i'll ask you i'll ask you paul the same question i asked those guys i know that you're not a big gambling guy i know you really probably don't pay attention to the lines i know that that's not really something that you never partake in a whole lot uh would you do you think it's fair do you like that line do you like the lane i mean it's minus 190 but for all intents and purposes would you like to lay 200 to win 100 on uconn to win the national championship you feel that good about it 
Yeah, it just if you look at how they played this year, they took three losses. One of them was a historic performance from Creighton. One of them was when Donovan Klingon got hurt, and one of them was at Allen Fieldhouse. Those are the three losses this year for UConn. Other than that, I mean, they're ten they're ten games into this dynasty run of UConn hoops between last year and this year in the national championship. They're ten and zero against the spread. It's almost like you'd rather just if you're going to take the two hundred dollars, just put them on them to cover on Saturday and then just roll it over on on Monday. It feels like the better bet right now. But, yeah, I mean, at minus 195, just because you figure the only way that, you know, Alabama has a chance is they can get up and down the floor. They can run up and down the floor. They can score with a maybe. But you just – there's just no answer for them because every – they're not even shooting the ball well. That's the crazy thing. They're terrible right now from three, and they're winning games by 30. No, I, I, listen, UConn, this probably UConn team, I, I think you posed it maybe last week, but essentially we're talking greatest of all time now. This isn't, this is, this has left the, the, the idea of, oh, who's the best team in the tournament? Every year you have that debate. Now we're in the, now we're in the, the, the talk of, are they the greatest of all time? Who's the closest team that you've got to see throughout your entire history of watching this tournament that you would think would give them their best run for their money? Well, I saw uh, Jack Mack from Barstool put it up on Twitter the other day that the in, in the Ken Palm years from the last 25 years, I think it was 2008 Kansas, they won the title. 2015 Kentucky, they lost. That was the undefeated team. And then 2021 Gonzaga that ended up losing to Baylor in the title game. Those are the only three teams that have been, by the analytics, better than this UConn team. But the crazy thing is, if you think back to how dominant last year's team was, in winning the national championship, this year's team is better, which is wild to think about, but they're better. And I can't think of a team. I mean, I, I know it was a little preemptive to probably put that out on Twitter about the 2018 Villanova team, because you think about that team. I mean, Jalen Brunson, but Dante DiVincenzo didn't even start on that team and he's in the NBA. So I, it's tough to like compare without them winning the title uh, so I, I was probably a little premature for me to throw that out there, but I can't think of a team that I've seen except maybe that 2018 Villanova team that would give this team a run for their money. It, it is unbelievable how many different ways this UConn team can beat you because, like I said, you'd think that maybe it's shooting, but it doesn't matter because they're shooting terribly right now. Also, have you seen all the? have you guys seen all of the stuff on uh, Twitter and everywhere about the balls being overinflated. Yes, I have. Uh, Paul, do you, have you ever so, had that problem? Well, <laughs> that is that is that is a, that is a real thing though, because uh, the they go to those Wilson, those NXT or EX or yes. whatever they call them. They they go to those permit and like uh, a, a lot of these teams, they will practice with them going into the tournament. But it's crazy. They are because most of these schools are Nike schools. So, you know, it is a real thing that that you get into the tournament and the the shooting numbers go down in the first couple of rounds. But for some of these teams, it's carried on. And I mean, God, look at NC State. Nobody can make a shot against them. But yeah, it's uh, it's just insane. And, and what what are they now? Minus 195 UConn? Yes. They, uh, the last I had looked, yeah. depending on the sports book, minus 190 uh paul frischer with the sean miller podcast we'll talk about xavier here in just a moment let's jump yeah. on the other side you have you have purdue uh you have nc state you have this darling run by nc state it does feel a little bit perhaps i'll get your opinion on this paul like every time you have one of these cinderella stories it usually crashes and burns at some point right the florida atlantics of the world uh, i think the george masons of years past but do you think that nc state matches up and or could give a purdue a run for their money well, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, can DJ Burns get up and down the floor and like stay in the game against Zach Eady? And I, I don't, I don't even so much mean foul trouble. I mean, I just mean the way that DJ Burns plays. Can he s- just physically stay in the game against Zach Eady? If he can, then maybe he can bother him. The guard play. I, I mean, DJ Horn, O'Connell. Like, yeah, there are some pieces there. I just. I just don't know. I, I, I really hope we get UConn and Purdue in the title game because that's what everybody wants. It's what everybody's wanted all season. And, yeah, NC State's a good story. I have ha, – you know, everybody's had a lot of fun watching them. But let's let's get Klingon. Let's get Edie. Let's get the big boys in the, in the title game and have some fun on Monday. 
I agree. I think that the the storylines are all fun and, and they're all, you know, glorious until they aren't. And I think that if we get anything other than UConn, Purdue on Monday night, uh, there might be disappointment, if you will. Uh, but, but who knows? Maybe well, Alabama can shock yeah. the world. I don't want to sit here and suggest for a single second. There is a little bit of a hesitancy I have, Paul, um, about the idea that everybody thinks it's just a Sherlock lay the 190 uh, to win the national championship with UConn, when in reality, perhaps, and I don't say Vegas knows something, but perhaps UConn is vulnerable. I don't know. Well, the the one thing about UConn is that the odds were still so I think they came into the season at like nineteen to one to win the title and around the Super Bowl they were still ten to one. So I'm just wondering if maybe the books still were taking on a lot and now they're trying to kind of hedge their way out of it and hope that Alabama can do something here. Like again, if Alabama shoots like they've shot this year, Alabama has no interest in playing defense, and that's the problem. Is you look at Illinois the best offense in the country besides Connecticut. Right. They scored 23 points against UConn in the first uh, 27 minutes of that game. So if, if you're Alabama and you get into a shooting rut like that, you don't have the defense to dig yourself out of it. You can't get the stops that you need to stay in the game. Whereas if you are a more well-rounded team, maybe we're having a different conversation. I just think that – the way UConn plays, they have so many ways to beat you that the way Alabama plays is let's just run up and down the floor, score 100 points, and hope that we can outscore you. That's great. It wins you a lot of games. It's what I say time and time and time again on, you know, over and over that I would much rather have a team that can score in, in the NCAA tournament than a team that is a defensive-minded team. I, I mean, Houston's probably a bad example because Jamal Shedd got hurt, but like you know, I, I would much, you get to the final four. It's it's a lot of times it's the teams that are much better offensive teams and defensive teams. I, I just it's I just don't see a world. I guess we're at, I guess Alabama hits. You know, they they shoot forty two percent from three, and UConn can't get anything to fall. And it's just one of those. You know, it's like Creighton beating UConn, where Creighton had the, their best shooting night like in program history, and UConn couldn't get anything to fall, but. Even that, it was at Creighton. It was a home game. I just, uh, oh, man, I don't know, Trace. They're just, yeah. they're just on another level. It's hard. It's hard to convince yourself too to in order to beat some team that you would seemingly think is much better. And I think it's safe to say UConn is much better. It's hard to believe that the way to beat that team is to to, to induce more possessions, basically make the game longer. Like the longer you play the game, yeah. Eventually, the better team ultimately is going to find themselves probably up. Uh, to your point, when you got these low-scoring affairs or you have a Houston, you have a Virginia that slow the game down, the games naturally are going to be a little more tighter. Now, that seven-point game might feel like 14 against against Houston and against Virginia, and yeah. a seven-point game against Alabama feels like a two-point game. But ultimately, you still find yourself in a spot where you like to shorten the game down if you're playing against a team like UConn because you just know that they're better than you. We'll find out. Uh, your yeah. favorite thing, Your favorite thing from the tournament – and then I think we have our favorite thing from the tournament that we'll share uh, right after your favorite thing. My, my just in general, my favorite yeah. thing. You, if, if somebody just stopped you dead <laughs> in your track and you said, "Hey, this tournament, what do you remember most?" There's it might be something small, Paul, but there's something that popped into your head. Just share it with the people. Uh, I don't. I mean, DJ Burns has been a great story. I don't right. know. I think that's probably the thing that when we look back in ten years and we talk about this tournament outside of UConn being a historically great team, I I just love these guys. I mean, when you look at uh, <laughs> when you when you I, you know what? No, I'm gonna take offense to that. I love that hat, Elliot. That hat was great. All right, <laughs> hug off, man. <laughs> I loved it too. Was great. I loved it too. <laughs> That's our favorite thing, Paul. You got anything to add to that? <laughs> no, I don't, Trace. Just leave it there. <laughs> I, I thought you oh, actually did God. a pretty good job rocking that, if I, I'm being I completely honest. I, 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 Elliot, Elliot what do you have to say about it? You think that he, you think you did an all right job? Paul, I thought you did great. I texted Paul immediately when I saw that bit, and I said, Paul, that was a jester move. Me and Paul are jesters deep inside in our hearts, and I knew when Paul pulled that one out, he was in his bag. He was, he was all, I'm looking at it now. I mean, that's a great hat. That's right. <laughs> that's a great hat. Well, you know what was funny is that face, that, that face was after he told me he was from Texas and didn't like barbecue. And I'm going, brother, what are we doing here? Yeah. What are I, we doing? 
that's yeah. that's very Paul, let me ask you this. What's one thing you miss about Hamilton? Oh, I miss the Taco Bell. You never knew what you were going to get at that Taco Bell. I've only been yeah. back to Taco Bell one time. I've only been to Taco Bell one time since I've left oh, Chatterbox. That's tough. It's just I can't bring myself to go back. I can't bring myself. The Baja no. Blast, it's the same. I, if you had to give me, again, Trace kind of just asked this, but if you had to look back at this, who had the more one shining moment, Gulky or Burns? Who has more? Like who gets who gets more time on the on the montage when this tournament ends? It's gonna be DJ Burns, but damn, Golki was he was something. Because the fun thing about Golki, the fun thing about him is what he's done with it that he's leaned into it. You know, like going oh, yeah. on barstool, doing all these NIL things. He's totally embraced what it means to be the white guy that makes a hundred threes in one game and then pops off and you don't really hear from him again. That's that's what Jack Golki is. And then DJ Burns has become this like larger than life personality that's gonna hopefully. I mean, I don't know. I he's out of eligibility. I think. I think yeah, this is the last out, we see because he's been around forever. He mm-hmm. was a he was a he was a freshman. He redshirted at Tennessee when I was still in college. That's outrageous. He he's been he's been around for a long time. That's the power. That's the power hey, of the uh, COVID redshirt. Wait, let me let me ask you fellas something because I know you I know you're super dialed in on this. Uh, we are. It, NIT, NIT tonight, Indiana State. Oh yeah. Um, what? Who are they playing? Our, our boy, the, the they're playing. Go- I think they're playing Georgia. Uh, Georgia. Better, they're playing better, Georgia. Georgia. Uh, better nickname: the uh, Cream Abdul Jabbar or um, what was that? Milk Chamberlain. Which one do you like better? <laughs> yeah, I haven't really got yeah, the Cream Abdul Jabbar. Man, it's just. I and to answer your nerd. Qu- yeah, Larry Nerd. That was a good one. Uh, Indiana State's going to win because uh, they clearly have rigged it in their favor. You saw that against UC. There were zero calls in favor of the Bearcats, and that's okay. They wanted to rig it for for the for the precious Indiana State squad. Uh, it's unfortunate they didn't make the tournament. I'll say that. It's unfortunate they didn't make the real tournament, the one that actually matters. Uh, and we had to sit and watch them play in this nonsensical tournament that nobody cares about. Paul, uh, Victor Locken has left UC. Do you think he might be coming to Xavier? I, he might. I think what his plan is to go back overseas, but that's when Xavier shines the brightest. They go overseas to recruit. They might look at this guy and say, "Hey, wow, he scored thirty points against Stetson and Merrimack. Uh, should they bring him over?" Well, see, I was going to ask you the same question. So, how does this work? They he goes back to where was he from, Elliot? Was he uh, from? He wasn't I think from Russia, I, was he? I thought he was from Mother Russia. I'm pretty sure. Is he okay? Well, we'll say he's from Russia. So does he go back? He plays in, he plays in the, the the Russian league for a year, and then he comes back over here. Is that is that the deal? I don't know. I guess that's what's happening. I I have no idea. It's it, it was very clear, uh, probably seven games into the into the Big Twelve schedule that he just didn't have it. Uh, Wes was tired of it. So I I don't know. I hopefully he makes more money over there. That's that's I I wish Vic the best. Uh, it was a bad fit towards the end of this season. Uh, on his way. Xavier's lost about 15 guys too, though, right? Yeah, Xavier's turning over basically the entire roster. Damn. Uh, I have a, a semi-serious question <laughs> Look at that for smile. Paul. Look at that smile <laughs> on his face. <laughs> Clearly, th- let's, let's face it. This region has some, some deep-rooted ties in college basketball. For those that, that obviously maybe start yeah. to have a little bit of dis- a disdain, I don't want to call it like, uh, you know, you're leaving the game per se, but, but let's face it. The... the the portal, coupled by the fact that you have the one and dones for a little bit of short time, it's hard to j- try to get invested into players and you have core nucleus guys that come up from freshmen all the way through their senior years. And then you find yourself in a position where you have uh, these college coaches now at this point, it's, it's in their best interest to try to go and find older players in the transfer portal than to maybe build from within. And as soon as you get to where you have a couple guys that leave, these coaches don't have a lot of time, Paul. They're going to have to find a way to win and win now, and the easiest way to win now in their minds is to go get older players, so you're left with no choice. What do you think? And I got this is a really big, maybe overarching question that's not fair to ask without even giving you a little bit of notice, but what's your biggest takeaway from college basketball right now, and what would you like for them to change, if anything, in your opinion? 
Well, I, I think it's a great question, not to get like super serious on it, but I think it's great for the for the health of the sport, really. The problem right now is you look at a team like Xavier, right, where you have all this talent last year, they make the Sweet 16, and then basically everybody leaves, and now you have to learn an entirely new team. And I'm talking to people still in February that are watching games, and when the team's not very good, it's hard to latch on. You know a guy like Quincy Oliveri, but maybe you don't know all the supporting cast and characters. But in the NIL era where it's the constant turnover, part of the charm, part of the, the what draws you to college sports is that you follow somebody when they come in as an 18-year-old, and then by the time they're 22, they spent three or four years in college, they go off to play professionally, they go off to have a professional career in whatever they want to do. They, you, you feel like you've gotten to know them. You think back to the Xavier years like J.P. McCura, Trayvon Blewett, Sean O'Meara, all those guys came in as a freshman, left a great legacy by the time they were seniors. Same thing at Cincinnati, same thing at NKU, any of those places. The difference is that now when you have this constant turnover year after year after year, you, you don't have the same attachment to the programs that you do. So you, you're relying on these diehard fans to basically be the ones that spur your program on, that follow the teams, all of that you know, et cetera. And when the team's not very good, it's hard for the casual fan to latch on because you have the NFL, you have baseball starting around the corner, you have spring training and all these things. And I think that right now, like in this area with Cincinnati and Xavier, I and mean, NKU is always good, but they have to win the conference tournament to get in the, you know, we're, we're talking about Cincinnati and Xavier here in, in, in this area. And when you think back to like the heyday of the last 15 years of Xavier and Cincinnati and back in like the 2015 to 2018 range, when both teams were top 10 in the country, it both protected seeds in the NCAA tournament didn't work out once they actually got there. But, you know, the Bengals were good, but they weren't Super Bowl contenders. The Reds were awful. But both college basketball teams were good, and it gave everybody something to do in the winter when the Bengals had been eliminated and there was nothing really to follow with the Reds. Now, all of a sudden, the Reds are competing in the NL Central. The Bengals are, we would like to hope, Super Bowl contenders every year. And the college basketball teams right now are lagging behind. So you have to think to yourself, what are you going to do around here to – turn the tide and get everybody as invested as they were they the, the team's got to start picking it up this was an off year for xavier it was fairly an off year for cincinnati but i think cincinnati has the pieces there to be building for the future xavier is going to build out of the transfer portal and i think that's probably what they're going to do here for the next couple couple of years it feels like because if they go and they get some guys that are juniors and seniors this year and that's where like i i think to your point trace to kind of wrap it up is that you're going to start to see some of the NIL and the transfer portal calm down, I think, in the next two to three years where maybe the money of the NIL might not necessarily, but a lot of these players that are getting millions and millions of dollars, or especially in college basketball where there's more players, it's different for a football quarterback. But these donors, there's going to be donor fatigue where a donor gives a million dollars to the NIL collective because they want to get this point guard from this school and then that point guard sucks. They don't get into the tournament. And then the donors say, mm, you know what? Maybe lose my number for a year, you know? And it, like, look at Villanova. Villanova spent $3 million on that roster this year to lose in the first round of the NIT. Now, I don't know what their donor base is and how much they're going to give for next season, but that was a $3 million roster that came up short in the NCAA tournament and then got bounced in the first round of the NIT. Those fans are not going to be happy about that. So, that's just a microcosm of what's happening at a lot of different places where you're going to have, you know, the same donor is being asked for the new practice facility, the NIL, uh, new, uh, a new capital campaign. Maybe they're given to the university too. It's just not sustainable. And that's where right now where it's all so fresh and so new and everybody's entering the portal. We still have kids with COVID years. It's going to figure itself out in the next two or three years. But for right now, it's still the Wild West. All right. One final Final parting question here from uh, Elliot Rearing. I have no idea where this is going to go, but uh, just prepare yourself, Paul. Hey, yeah. Paul. Hey, Paul. This is Elliot. How you doing, buddy? Hey. Uh, hey, I just, hey. We'll see. I, so I was looking in the back of you there, and I see a, a beautiful portrait. You know that thing's like slanted horizontal. Like that, that's so slanted that it's almost preposterous. Yeah, you're going to have to fix that. Yeah. Keep moving it. Keep, keep going up. Keep going up. You're gonna to want to keep going up. It was it was bad. There you go. That's probably better. 
Is that all you wanted from me? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Hey, lawnmower man says hello. Uh, he was here. He was mowing the grass today. So. Oh, thanks. So well, I just he, well, no, he wasn't mowing the grass. That would mean he's actually doing his job. <laughs> You're right. He was mowing the cement. All right, Paul. That was it. Thanks for coming on, pal. Yeah, thank you, Paul. We appreciate hey, go, it. Uh, and, uh, go ahead. I, go to Gina's for me. I miss Gina's. Go I, to I, Gina's I, for me. I'll, I'll try to go. We'll I'll that. try to go. Not today, though. On behalf of uh, everybody here at the office, we're going to try to all stay alive, Paul. You do the same. Uh, watch out for those storms. Yeah. And take care of yourself. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, Xavier's against all, everybody. That is Xavier's, for Xavier's against storm chasing. So, oh, here we go. That is that is uh, <laughs> that is Paul Frischner <laughs> from the Sean Miller podcast. That was actually a pretty good uh, little bit you did there. That I got to be honest with you. Good. Sometimes you're funny. Sometimes you're not. You, you you hit a home run there at the end on the storm chaser thing. I uh, thank you. Um, all right, we will be back. We're going to talk about Reds and more on your home for off the bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. Your home for the best sports coverage in the Miami Valley, 1410 Wing AM. All right, not the uh, not the not the smoothest uh, transition there, but you know what? Hey, we're, we're practicing. Learning. We're this learning. Is practice. We're learning. This just is practice. a big practice. Spring training. Somebody that said that spring training means nothing, which nothing. is you. Nothing. Um, maybe not even a little. Maybe um, starting to prove your point out. Uh, why? Because it's Cincinnati Reds. All right, I'm gonna bring us back in. Right now, because we're going to talk about the Reds, and uh, we'll see if we get to anything else. You have a buy or sell, though. We do. We'll get to that. Um, we'll we? welcome back in. All right, welcome back in to what? Off the Bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. Uh, we just got off the, uh, the airwaves. I guess we can say that now, because we're on the radio. The airwaves with Paul Fritschner. Thank you to him for joining the, the show. Uh, check out Paul with the Sean Miller podcast. Sure, they have a lot of things to talk about. Sometimes I wonder. I, I feel bad for Paul because it's like, what are you, what are you going to actually discuss? And being in Dayton now, I don't think there's that many folks. I don't think that's the demographic that's looking for the Sean Miller podcast. If we're being honest, maybe not. No, probably not. Um, Xavier, some would say, are ducking Dayton. I wouldn't say it. You wouldn't say it. No. Casey nope. wouldn't say it. Right. But some are saying. Some are saying Xavier because, is you know, ducking they, Dayton. They say it's not. The Dayton's not worth our time anymore. Correct. All we do is blow out Dayton. Right. <clears throat> But, but but it seems like that certainly could be a fun rivalry. Maybe one could... team made the tournament this year. One team didn't. Ooh. The team that didn't make the tournament is concerned that they don't think that the other team's worthy of playing. Very uh, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, and as we transition to the Reds, I did want to give a quick shout-out to Evan. Evan doesn't like me, but I, I will give this to Evan. On that game on Saturday that we blew, he caught a ball, Trace, barehanded. He caught a foul ball. Mm -hmm. he, he was, and it was very impressive. I, I saw it in the corner of my, I didn't know it was Evan at the time because I saw it happen, and I and I was I was with my friends and I said, "Hey, that was a hell of a catch." And then Evan texted me. He's like, "Yo, that was me." I'm like, "Okay." So shout out to Evan. Wow. Uh, that game went terribly wrong on Saturday, but Evan caught a ball, so the world was uh, in a good place. So shout out to Evan, even though he hates me. Mm. Breaking news in the chat: uh -oh. uh, Sean Spurlock said that Victor Lockin is in the transfer portal now. It's going oh. back to Russia. Didn't know that. Oh. Did you know that, Elliot? I did not. <laughs> I did not. Uh, and also, uh, shout Casey out. Casey thought that was funny. I, yeah. I don't know if this is going to make for good radio, but, man, I think the chat. I think people. Radio. Listen, people think this is funny. I, I made Casey laugh, which is very hard to do. There's times where Casey just sits over there. You think that he's in his own little world. He's <laughs> in outer space. And I know that he is from time to time. <laughs> Casey, you thought that was good. Yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Sometimes I am in my own little world. But, you know, on to the Reds. On to the they Reds. They are, people are saying I cursed the Reds on the one game I've attended, 0-1, uh, yeah. and, and it was a historic, a historic uh, loss. Uh, mm. and, and I wanted to – we're going to do some uh, buy or sell, which all pertains to the Reds as I get out my singular thing here. Okay, uh, so we have a buy or sell but, on the Reds. So Correct. So we're going to wow. talk Reds. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a Love whole that. conversation. Here. All right. Um, so if you want, we can just start, or I can give some initial thoughts on the weekend series. Yeah. What, what, what do if you want we do, do buy or sell a lot, I think in the radio biz, they have like little stingers that they could create yeah. for us. I bet we could do that. We'd be like, buy or sell. Well, he, well I've got it. Well, he's got it. Sell, oh, sell, you sell, got sell. it. Yeah. You got the, it. The, I, I, just ran, bye, bye, bye. I just ran them. So oh, it's, bye, bye, bye. Oh, yeah. Bye, bye, bye. So yes. So. I'm in like a, like a long form one, but, but, but yeah. Oh, we I have see. Our like a little bit. intro. I yeah. see. Okay. You know, you, right. I thought you were a radio guy. I thought you'd keep up with that, but maybe not. Uh, yeah, I keep up with it a little bit. Probably uh, not, actually. Here, Sometimes I wonder if you actually work for a radio station. but Okay, it sounds like slander, but we're going to continue on. Buy or sell, Reds edition. Uh, the Reds are 3-1. and one. By the way, incredible how baseball is. I thought we were down to our last strike. 
on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, our That's last right. strike. Last strike. When Jonathan India saved our season. Yeah. We were one strike away from being uh, – I, I was ready to call it. And then I guess this is where overreaction fans uh, like myself – Kind of get annoying, and yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, a little, little over, little overkill. A little overkill. I get it. I, I'm, I'm a very, uh, uh, how do you want to say it? I don't know. Exa- words, ex- words don't seem to be coming to that brain. No, 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 no. They, they rarely do. I, I exaggerate a lot. I exaggerate a lot when it comes to the Reds because I, and I freak out. I see what happens. They don't look very good, and then it comes down to the last strike, and we somehow, by the grace of God, win that game. Uh, but going off that, there are a couple guys that have shined out through four games. Mm-hmm. Number one being. Spencer Steer. Buy or sell, Spencer Steer is the most valuable player on the Reds. Sell. Uh, I love Spencer Steer, but I can't buy that uh, because I think that there are more valuable assets to this team. The most being, right now, I think that Will Benson is the most valuable player on this team. He's continued to produce. I think that he has the ability on the base pass, and I think that that's the area where Spencer Steer probably doesn't get named as much as he should. If Spencer Steer could steal bags and be even, uh, let's call it slightly below average in the outfield, which he may be already, okay? I'm not suggesting for a single second that Spencer Steer couldn't eventually become an average outfielder because he very much may, and he might already be there. We just haven't had the time to be able to see that develop. He's a hell of a hitter. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind right now, Minnesota. Could you imagine being a Minnesota Twins either fanboy and or being in the front office of, of Minnesota right now? Yeah, you watched you watched that game that you so eloquently speak about where they were down to their last strike and Jonathan India found a way, willed his way to get on base there. But then the very next two guys come up and they all, in a way, came off of that Minnesota situation. Now, I know Will Benson didn't come from Minnesota. But he did come from as a as a kind of like well you know the hockey assist um, where it's just like you know you don't get the actual specific assist it's the second pass yeah that's kind of what we got out of the Minnesota Twins we got a hockey assist on Will Benson you have Spencer Steer and then now you see CES hit a walk off home run and then the next night you see Spencer Steer hit a grand slam so the Twins uh, front office should be down pretty bad. They should be down pretty bad. I'm going to disagree with you, and I'm going to say buy it. Wow, uh, you're buying. Yeah, I think he is the most important person, not because of uh, of just how good of a hitter he is. He's going to be available every day. I don't think he's going to get hurt. I think he's going to be ready, and he's going to be able to play. And it comes down to this. If, if your season's on the line, Trace, and you say, we need a base hit, we need to get on base, we need to extend the game, we need to win the game, who do you want at the plate? And I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you, there's two guys that I can name right now that I want at the plate with my season on the line. It's Will Benson and it's Spencer Steer. Those are my two guys. Those are the two guys that are, that are going to give me the best at bat. They're the, the, the two most consistent hitters. Those are the two guys I want, and I think at this moment it's Spencer Steer. I think this season he is going to be a key. Ellie is great. Ellie obviously is the highest ceiling out of anybody. It's not close. Saying that while Ellie figures it out, I'm going to take Spencer Steer because we need somebody to anchor this, this lineup, and he is that anchor. He, this this lineup is never going to be bad because Spencer Steer's in it. I, I I think he is the most important guy we have on this roster. I do, batting wise, not pitching wise. I do think Spencer Steer. I don't think he's the most valuable, but he definitely raises the floor of this team significantly. I mean, without him, we would probably be in in a really really bad shape. Yeah, we'd be in, we'd be in really shape. bad shape. You know exactly what he's going to give you every single game. He's going to at least give you a, a, a base hit and then maybe a walk. Just yeah. about every single game. You know I, that for a I, fact. And he might make one play in the outfield that you're just like, hey, that's Spencer Steer. Go ahead. He's very consistent. I yeah. mean, that's very, the thing. That's and the we, best we, got a chan- we got a chance to talk to uh, Spencer Steer at Reds Fest. And the thing that he had mentioned that perhaps is, is something that most guys, when you ask them, hey, what is the most thing that you're proud about about your game? Spencer Steer said pretty quickly, um, availability. I, I, I expect to be there for my team, and I want to be consistent. And you know what? That's probably the biggest asset that you could have as a major league player, and he's been that. He has been that, and he's continued to be that. So we'll see if he can continue that throughout the rest of the season. But to be fair, we talk about all these other guys, the Ellie De La Cruzes of the world. Uh, certainly we talked about Noel Ve Marte a lot. We talked about Matt McLean a lot. We talked about CES. We talked about all these young guys always – Always, always, Spencer Steer seems to be left out of that group. Every time. Every time. And you know what? Of all of the guys that I just talked about, the most consistent guy 
without question by far is Spencer Steer. I might be misremembering this uh, commercial from last year, but it's see the ball, hit the ball. It's not that hard. Something around the lines of that, and that's Spencer Steer. There you go. That's our guy. Making the game more. Can I ask you a question? If the season's on the line, who do you want at the plate? Bases loaded, you need need a run to to win the game. Bases loaded, who do you want at the plate? Uh, I would say if it's a right-handed pitcher, Jake Fraley. But I would say if you told me right now that I wasn't allowed to pick the – the dexterity, there's a big word for you, the dexterity of the pitcher. Yep. Now, it, was, it was a blind pick. I would say Spencer Steer. Because right-handed, left-handed, I still feel confident. If there's a lefty against Fraley, I feel not good at all. So for that answer, and for that reason, like you do on the Shark Tank show, which I think that you, you, you do that a lot, yeah. for that reason, I'm taking Spencer Steer. I'm out. Uh, next up, I saw this all over Red's Twitter. Ellie De La Cruz should bunt more. Buy, are you buying Ellie De La Cruz should be bunting more? He's already bunting an okay amount. Like that's I, what I, I thought I, too. I, I, I don't. I don't think he should be bunting more. So I'm going to sell that. I also think that I. I just worry sometimes with a young player. You start to try to make him something that he's not, and you start to ask him to do things that he that he's not capable of doing, or maybe he's not comfortable of doing. And then all of a sudden, you get him to where he's starting to think too much. He's not just using his God-given natural ability. A lot of this game is psychological. I've said that time and time again. Major League Baseball, almost anybody that gets to the big leagues has the God-given talent to really be, I don't want to say a superstar, but to be a pretty damn good player, if not, if not a perennial borderline all-star. The question is, is what do you have in between the ears? That's the nature of the beast. And I don't, I don't think that's a shock, but the truth is, is that I worry a little bit that Ellie came up, and when as, as soon as he came up, he was this young, naive, brash, I'm better than everybody because that's what I've always been. Yep. And you know what? The, it's a radio show, so I can't say what I really want to say. But the dude did it. For two weeks, two and a half weeks, three weeks, whatever it was last year, when he first came up, he was the best damn player on the field. Every single game, you thought to yourself, wow, I am watching greatness. And then, of course, you know people are going to say, well, the league made adjustments to him. He cooled off. He's really not that good. I, I'm not suggesting for a second that he was going to be that great, but I think there are times when he plays where he's not no, – no, he's not. He's not been bad by any stretch of the imagination. But I just hope we don't continue to ask Ellie to do things that he's not comfortable with. Just let the kid play. Yeah. Just let the kid play. So I'm going to sell. He doesn't need to do anything other than just go out there and play. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but bunting more will lead to – different looks at that you're going to receive like pitching wise right you're you're going to go up to a at bat and you're going to get different looks than you normally would if you're known to be bunting more not necessarily that- you could argue that you would get some defensive looks that were going to be different maybe the third baseman if you're a pool hitter play the third in. baseman will have to start to play in a little bit versus being able to shift over and play near the shortstop bag but I wouldn't say that they would pitch him differently at this point though Casey um, I think it's fair to say that Ellie De La Cruz is not going to get that many more like he's not going to get challenged with a fastball all that often anymore in my opinion because he's proven that he can hit that now it's whether or not he can lay off off speed pitches and if he can put the bat on the ball when it comes to some kind of change up split finger slider cutter all those types of pitches well my my only one thought on this is he is most effective when he's actually on base when you have that is a a great point Casey yes so for me, I don't know if bunting more, more or less. I, I think he's already doing a lot of that, to be honest with you. So I don't know if buy is necessarily correct here, but I think they're doing the right thing with him. If they're telling him that he needs to bunt more and that's what he's been doing, then they're on the right path because getting on base is important for him. Bunting more also gives you the – when Ellie strike, he, we, we, Casey and I have looked at it, he struck out nine times in four games. That's right. It's a decent amount of strikeouts there. Bunting puts the ball in play, giving him a chance to get on base. Correct. That's the difference. And, and if you're putting the ball in play, Ellie with that speed has a chance to get get to first base. And I think that's – and I'll be very clear, I'm not comparing him to Billy Hamilton, but if Billy Hamilton was able to do that more consistently, he'd be an all-star. If Billy Hamilton got on base, he'd be an all-star. But he couldn't get on base. Ellie De La Cruz is at a point where he's, where it's, where he's so young right now where I'd like to just see him work on hitting a curveball or a slider every now and then. But saying that from the right-handed side of the plate, I think he should only be laying down bunts. I, 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 don't, I don't like what I see when he, when he comes up on the right-handed side of the plate, and, and I'd rather him just try to put the ball in play, have him race down to first, hopefully he gets it. Uh, and, and So, yeah, I'm going to say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to buy it. I'm gonna yeah, say the last point I would more. make to that is I do think that I said this yesterday on Chatterbox Reds. I think that there's going to come a point in the not-too-distant future on whether or not Ellie should switch hit, period. 
Because, I mean, at some point, if, if your splits are really, really, really bad um, as a right-handed hitter against left-handed pitching, then let's just figure out what that looks like against lefty on lefty. Uh, Will Benson's starting to get an opportunity lefty on lefty. We'll see he if he, we'll, we'll see if we'll see if it it plays out. But uh, it'll be interesting. Hopefully, Ellie uh, continues to produce. If he gets on base, he's a he's a game changer. Uh, next up, we should be more concerned about the bullpen. I have I have this take last year, and then I was proven wrong on it every single time. I said mm-hmm. the bullpen's going to be the worst part of the team. Every one of these guys I don't trust. I don't know if I'm at the same place. Alexis Diaz, they put him in, in the eighth inning last night, and all the David Bell haters were coming out of, out of the woodwork and saying, oh, this is how we're going to lose, David Bell, putting, putting our closer in in the eighth inning. And he did get kind of bailed out, if I'm going to be honest. He did get kind of bailed out with that uh, pitch out or whatever it was, the, the, the pickle. But I don't know. I, I, I go back and forth on this. The, the blown game on Saturday, which it was pretty much all bullpen, and I know Hunter Green didn't go too far into that game, but he, he, had, a sol- he had a solid game. It was just defense was terrible. I'm concerned about the bullpen, Trace. I'm concerned I'm not going to be able to rely on some of these guys. And it's just because they come out, it seemingly, and this is maybe just a gross uh, overgeneralization, it seems like they come out and the first batter they walk them every time. And, and that's what I'm concerned about with these, with these opening batter walks. Fernando Cruz did it Saturday. It obviously came back to haunt. Yesterday, TJ Antone did it. That run scored, but it, it, came back, it didn't come back to haunt technically, uh, but it could have come back to haunt. So I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say, yeah, we should be a little bit concerned here that it's not going to be as good as last year, I guess. It's not going to be the world's worst bullpen. It just might not be a top 10 bullpen like we thought and hoped and saw it was last year. Well, let's run through the names, right? You have TJ Antone, you have Justin Wilson, Lucas Sims, Alexis Diaz, Buck Farmer, Fernando Cruz, Emilio Pagan, and Brent Suter. Um, out of the, all the guys that I named, I could really ju- genuinely say uh, some of these guys are not going to be there regardless once you have Sam Mole return. Um, and, and, and all reports have been that he's good to go relatively in the near future. So I'm not going to overly kind of I, – I guess I'm just not going to overreact here to a certain extent. Last year I was told this bullpen was the only reason that this Reds team wasn't going to find themselves in the postseason. And it turns out that the, the Reds, if they didn't have their bullpen, would have lost – you know, let's just say they would have lost 90 games because the bullpen was, without question, one of the foundational pieces of their success last year. And again, at this time last year, we had everybody, uh, and, and not, it, I think it was a significant amount of people that were that were raising hell about their bullpen. So, you know, I think it's a very fickle thing. The bullpen, let's be honest as well, when you watch a game, they don't have a very good chance of, like, winning your heart, no. right? They, they only have – they have really what we would call a referee syndrome, which is you only have a chance to fail most times in the, yep. in the fans' eyes. You go out there and you throw three or four shutout innings, great. Bullpen was good, but you don't really think about it as the main storyline. If you blow it, then the bullpen is the reason that you lost. Same with the referees. If you don't know the referees at the end of the game, they did a great job, nobody cares about them. But, boy, if they miss a call, they're the main storyline. That's the idea with the bullpen. I'm not going to overly concern. I'm going to sell this. Um, I like Suter. I like Pagan. I like Cruz. I don't like Buck Farmer. I like Diaz. I like Sims. And I think that Justin Wilson, TJ Antone, and quite honestly, Buck Farmer over time are replaceable. But if you're reliant, again, on the bottom three guys in your bullpen, also I want to remind everybody that Nick Martinez is going to probably be in the bullpen in the not too distant future. He looks like a guy that we can trust in the bullpen. So I am selling. You're selling. Yes. I bought it, but that's okay. Casey? I'm I'm selling just because it's too early to tell in my opinion. That's one hundred percent fair. I mean, I'm I'm gonna give this another couple weeks. I'm going to come back to this in April, and I'm going to give a fair answer. But as of this moment, if I was concerned about anyone, it was going to be uh, Buck Farmer. And then I feel like Diaz just had – it was his first game, like regular season game. I'll, I'll give him a pass on the first one. He did okay yesterday. Um, Pagan, I don't know. Trace already said it eloquently. I mean, some of those guys are not going to be there in the near future. So – Give me another month, and I'll let you know how I'm feeling. Kirby says, should Ellie Bunt would be a good bonus buy or sell? Didn't, didn't we just do that? I think he just got bitten by a bit. The, bit. the bit king just got bitten by the chat bit. 
I can't huh. believe I just saw that with my own eyes. Me? I can't believe you fell for that. No, Kirby, no, Kirby, just, Kirby just no, said he missed it. definitely didn't see it. Kirby said he missed it. Not a bit. That was a joke. I, be- I still don't believe it. <laughs> we literally just did it. Like I know, I ago. know, but I think that's a bit. He just said it wasn't. Well, so I don't awesome. believe it. See, now you're getting bitten by the bit that's a bit on top of a bit. Oh, See, that's a, this is excellent this radio. Is, For those that don't know, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to figure out a way to start to learn the inside uh, the inside baseball that we have on this show. We have people obviously in our chat. You can watch our show on YouTube every single day and, and participate in the show, as we'd like to say. Sure. And uh, there there becomes a running joke in certain areas, and I do think that 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 uh that he knew that we just did that segment and now he just got you he, he got you to bring it up i don't think he did well it's I, a, I, now I think, we now we have a big uh a big debate on our hands that we'll get to perhaps after the show i don't know we'll find out do you have another buy or sell on your hand yeah are we i've got two well, let's get to them because we are running out of time the will, radio runs on precise timing buy or sell will benson needs to play every day Whew. oh that's a good one I'm going to buy. Did you put your it. big brain hat on for that one? I did. I'm going mm. to buy it. Will Benson again? I, I mentioned this with Steer earlier. Those two give me the best at bats, the best quality at bats. I want him in the lineup. I don't care if it's a lefty. I don't care if it's a righty. I want him playing. I'll tell you what. I think he's earned enough cred to be able to get a chance for an extended period of time, based off of the options we have beneath him. Do you want Benson to play every day, or do you want Bubba Thompson to take those reps away? I'd rather just figure out if Benson can figure it out. Right. Even if even if it means even if it means that he can't, because at least now we know. Or we could just run Bubba Thompson out there. Maybe Bubba Thompson would play great. I'm not. There's nothing against Bubba. I like Bubba Shrimp. <laughs> I don't like Bubba respectfully. Well, you don't like a lot of guys that aren't the main players, to be honest. So shout out to Stuart Fairchild for getting on the base a few times last night as well. But here's the thing. Uh, I am going to look great defense- buy that. Look, you look great defensively on Saturday. I'm going to buy that. You're gonna buy it, Casey. Yeah, I yeah, I'm gonna buy this too. That's I, three buys. I think I think he's definitely proven enough to to let, at least let you continue to test the waters out, right? I think last yeah. year we let him test the waters maybe too long, but it's a new year. Let him try. Yeah. Did you did you sell anything of your own segment, by the way? Uh, or is this stuff that you just believed in? You just wrote it down, and you're just gonna buy it all? I don't know if I sold any of them. Hmm. Just I curious. I, I think I bought them all. All right, next one. Final, uh, final one. Final one. Final one. Let me get rid of that one, and I put this one on. Reds are the worst defensive team in the NL Central. <laughs> Certainly um, feels like it. Boy, I don't. I see. Here's where my my uh, inexpertise would come out. Uh, I don't know enough about the rest of the Central to be able to say this without a doubt. I've not seen the Cardinals play enough. I did see the Cubs the other day. The Cubs are a really good defensive team. If we're being completely honest, I don't like saying that, but that's the truth. Uh, then I guess you have the Pirates and you have the Brewers. Brewers, clearly, they've been very good defensively. That's the reason as to why they've had success in the past. So I would have a hard time venturing out to say that the Reds aren't uh, are better than them. Now we have uh, who would be left. I guess you have the Pirates and the Cardinals, the two teams that I would just throw my hand up in the air and say, Jesus, take the wheel. I'm not sure. But they're not very good defensively. We know that. Um, the, I guess the bigger question would be how does it get fixed? And I don't think that there's a real easy answer to you that, can't. which is a very, very concerning. And it's it's largely based off of two guys. If we're if we're allowed to be completely frank about it, uh, I think Matt McLean not being available and T.J. Friedel not being available makes this team defensively incredibly more inefficient because that was their two things that they did over exceedingly well. So when you take the two, that's almost like in a, in a really sad way. It'd be like, take the two best traits away from any player and ask if they're good anymore. I don't know if it's fair. I, I guess for a, long, a long-winded way of saying, I don't think it's fair to be extremely disappointed about the Reds defensively when you took their two best defensive players away. I mean, if Michael Jordan wasn't, you know, didn't have um, vertical leaping abilities then he wouldn't have been a very good player. If you take away Joe Burrow's uh, moxie in the pocket, then he wouldn't be a very good player. It's like the, the, You can't take things away from somebody that makes them great and then all of a sudden expect them to be okay again. So TJ Friedel's supposed to be back hopefully in, in what, six weeks was the, was the time that they had given us. Matt McLean, I think at this point, I'm just going to suspect and assume he's out for the season. That's what I think. If he comes back before that, by all stretch of the imaginations, I will be pumped, but I don't expect that. And then Noel Ve Marte, I know I keep leaving him out on purpose because I got to be honest with you. If this Reds team, if this Reds team is anywhere near the hunt, if they've played decent baseball to where they are considered to be a part of a pennant race, 
then people are going to hate me for saying this, but I don't think you bring, you, you bring Noel Ve Marte back at all. I 100% I think you, I think agree. think you keep him in AAA. He plays the rest of the season. That's not a punishment, by the way. That's not a punishment. That's just, hey, if I can't rely on this guy to be there when the games are going to matter the absolute most, then I don't want him there at all from just some kind of... Now, again, I, I hold my hand up and say, if there's another injury to where you have to play him because he's clearly your best available, so be it. But if, if the chips fall where they may and nobody gets hurt, then guess what? I don't suspect him to come back, and I'm not counting on him to come back. Now, I'm not out on Noel Marte, to be clear. I will support him when he comes back next season if that's the way in which the Reds choose to go about it. But I don't want to... and I, It's not a mojo thing. It's just genuinely speaking, why are we going to shift guys around the infield and expect them to play different positions and then all of a sudden, boom, hey, we got a, we got a three-game wildcard series for the rest of our lives and we got guys playing third base now that haven't played third base in two months. That yep. seems like a terrible idea. I, 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 people aren't going to like that take. I agree with it 100%. If you are going to try to win in the postseason, you have to try to play with the roster that you've had all year. You can't change up the roster. It's not fantasy sports. You don't get a you don't get a rod half for half the year, and then he just disappears magically. It doesn't make sense. So I agree with you. There might be a point where injuries force him to come back and play. But yeah, I I I, I agree with you. I don't think Noelvi should come back. Yeah. If well, I mean, to be uh, to be fair if though, to be fair though, our, our fearless captain that is now a broadcaster in the booth, you could take it. You could take his uh, thought process, which is you could move some guys around the the, uh, the diamond, and they might end up just being better third basemen when they come back to play it again. Maybe. Think. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, and by the way, I'm going to buy this. This is the worst defensive team maybe in all of Major League yeah. Baseball. This is bad. Wow, I'm not. This is really bad. Now we're Did you watch a game absurd. Saturday? Because I was there, and it was disgusting. Correct. And by the way, but you're the whoever, kept, of whoever was the scorekeeper in that game, right. how was there no errors? Because because I'll tell you why. Major League Baseball has, has to do something about the scorekeeping. I get the concept that if you can't really justify that it's a routine play, you can't give an error to somebody, then you know what? Let's come up with some new stats. Let's call it team errors. There's a team error. You got two guys that are talking to each other between Espinal and CES, and it's a pop-up in the infield, and neither guy decide they, they want to take control, and they're both, you know, in, in kind of miscommunication, and the ball falls between them. That's not an error? Like, come on. That's an error. We, that's we, an let's, error. Come up, let's come up with a better solution, Major League Baseball, than just saying, oh, you know what, that's got to be a hit because there's nobody in the infield we can give the error to. Just come up with a team error. You have to. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And there were several pop-ups. What about our center fielder not throwing a ball in? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, he did not know how many outs there were. I've seen people on Twitter wondering, uh, Stuart Fairchild, for those that didn't see, caught a fly ball. You know, whether he throws the guy out at home, I don't know. But the truth is, is he'd had a puncher's chance to throw him out. But he didn't know how many outs there were. He caught the ball, kind of took a step or two in, and then he realized, oh, wait, nobody else was kind of running off the field with me. Let me throw the ball in. I, I just – he was not – he was not – put it this way – Stuart Fairchild was not just, uh, what would be the right term here, foregoing the opportunity to throw him out at home. He just didn't know how many outs there were, which is a pretty big, a which pretty is, big thing. You could argue is worse, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It's All not right. Paying well, attention. we come your way every single day from 10A to 12P, which that means. Way, I tell you that was a bad way to end it. Which means, which means we'll be back on 1410 Wing AM in Dayton. Thank you for watching, everybody. And by watching, I mean listening. All right, uh, we can go overtime here. I, I don't. I, you can't say they're the worst defensive team. They're pretty bad, man. But after the, one game, I, I Luke Maley looked game. bad. You're like the most. You you you, over, you, you are the mat. And you know what? That's just that's that's who you are. That's why maybe people will love yeah, you, I, you no, no, Mr. No. Overreactor. Nick, Kirby, Nick Kirby just you told are Mr. Nick Kirby Overreactor. just said in the chat. Spencer Steer. He doesn't trust a ball getting hit to him. I know okay, he doesn't. But, but, I know he but doesn't, just because I, you don't wait, trust wait, something doesn't whoa, mean it's true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know he doesn't trust, and neither do you, uh, Jonathan India catching a second ball or catching a ground ball at second base. I know that for a fact. Damn. I go around the infield. It's the same thing. Ellie De La Cruz can make great plays. He made one on Sunday on Easter, that jumping, leaping catch into center field, shallow center field. But he can also whiz a ball past the first baseman. You go around the infield here, I don't know. Go around the outfield, I don't know. And not a good, not a good defensive team. Hmm. No Gold Glovers here. Also, I just want to note, uh, we got some work to do on the show because I just realized that we actually are on, uh, we are on from one to three in Dayton. 
So at 10 a.m. to noon, we're going to have to do some clarification. Hoops. Just saying. Oh, yeah. We're so probably going to have to. Well, also, our, I, I don't know. I like how we're going to do this powwow right in the middle of the front of all. This is inside baseball here. This is inside baseball. I think, I think Chatterbox Reds is getting. What, what time? What? We're, getting, we're, I, I think, yeah, that's an hour. But my point is that it's not 10 to noon. So okay. we're going to we'll have to figure that out. But, hey, here nor there. Yeah, I think we'll be fine with that. Figure it out. I think we'll be fine. I think at some point we just say, well, 10 to noon on YouTube and on uh, 1 to 3. That's right. Uh, 14, 10, wing a.m. Do you think if the Reds win tonight, we're going to the World Series? Uh, I don't think the Reds are going to play tonight. <laughs> I don't think either. By the way, Miami softball, they, 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 uh, they, got, a, they got a game in an hour. Is that yeah. the plan? I guess that's the plan. Okay. Should we do a quick Cincinnati weather update real quick? Everybody's uh, yeah, with please me. be safe, everybody, by the way. I, I, and I know people in the chat are joking about Reed. I, I am very, like, sometimes, yeah, we do bits around here. Like, I don't, I don't know where he's at. I'm going to have to call him as soon as the show's over because I don't love the idea of him being out there. It just seems like, first of all, I don't know if you've ever been to Oxford, but Oxford, uh, you, know, you know, one could say that if there is dangerous weather, that's not the place that you would pick to go. Correct. Yeah, we're talking open agree. fields, out in the plains. And this is the softball field too. This is the right. So I'm just saying, but I, but I, but I do I do have some solace. It's a word I use a lot in the fact that I would hope they have some kind of bunkers or they have something out there that is a safe haven for our people. If uh, if it just so happens that they're not able to play a game in uh, please tell me that's not tornado what's weather. I, that's what I was going to. Sh- I don't know if I'm allowed to play this. Is the only thing because I don't know. What does the, that mean? I think the kid's okay. So I'm going to I'm going to show I'm going to I'm going to show Trace right now in this video and I'll get, I'll tell I'll ask him if I'm allowed to play it. Uh, Casey, I'll send it to you just in case he gives it. But this is what's going on in Kentucky right now. Uh, so I'm going to send it to Casey and then I'm going to I'm going to make the walk over to Trace. So Casey, take it real quick. Yeah, I it, it didn't look pretty. <laughs> it didn't look pretty what was coming. Um But yeah, I <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Kentucky right now. I wanted to say one thing about the Reds. Uh that we really didn't touch on a whole lot, and that's sure. just that they're playing really he- exciting baseball. We kind of jumped right into the buy or sell stuff. They're playing really exciting baseball. It has been very entertaining to watch them the last, what, they've played four games now, and we've had a grand slam, we've yep. had a walk-off, and opening day was just an offensive shootout. I, mean, I think, if anything, that the brand of baseball this Reds team does play is fun. And I, yeah. there was a tweet last night on Chatterbox Reds that we put up. I think it was Cubs fangirl or something, and she was just already complaining about how the Reds are going to find a way to win all these ninth and tenth inning games, and it's just going to be brutal to watch. There is something about this team that is going to irritate other fan bases because they look young, they look fun, they're not boring, they have a lot of star power in regards to young players that might end up being you know, incredible players. And, uh, yeah, you can be a little jealous of that. But – I just want to – we're going to run the clip. By all stretch of the imaginations, I want to preface it by saying, you know, we assume that this, this, this person's okay. This was but by I think w- a bigger point. A bigger point is to say this stuff should be taken, like, seriously. And that's where, again, I'm trying to be respectful of other people, other organizations that decide, you know what, they're making the right decision. But sometimes you just wonder, maybe you should – we should use our brains here a little bit. We're going to try to play a double header, and this took place where? Double header? We're getting ready to try to play a double header. Oh, I see. And this I, see took, I see. I see. And this, I see. I see. I see. Please take it away from there. So this is. I'm going to make sure this is not our video. This is WKYT. This is a first alert WKYT in wherever Kentucky. Uh, this was a student on their way to class in at the University of Kentucky. So that's what that's what Reed's gonna be dealing with uh, in about an hour. I just don't get it. I I don't get it. But all right, stay safe. Please stay safe. Uh, we're gonna come your way hopefully tomorrow from ten a, a to twelve p. p. And by ten a, we mean one p to three p on the radio. That's right. So here's the deal. Please stay safe. Uh, make sure your loved ones are safe. Uh, life is precious. It's short. Hopefully, uh, we got some bad weather on the way. Let's hunker down. Let's get through it. Say a little prayer. Hopefully, we all come back here tomorrow. We can talk sports because, as I said before, and I truly believe it, there's more important things going on in the world than what we talk about, I know. But we are the toy aisle of life. And we continue to do that because we want to entertain you. We want to have fun. We just want to be happy. So, I think we have. We have a United Dairy Farmer's Cherry on top, Casey. I mean, you know, you already know what this is. I haven't told you about it, but I wanted to play it anyways because oh. in case people haven't seen it, 
It's just your reaction from oh, the... Oh, uh, look at this. Some pub. Yep. That's it. From the show yesterday. Please. Get Please. Out. Is that your lucky Go. Day? Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Woo. Shadowbox Reds. Fire me up, Spence. I gotta ask. That's why you don't hit for him, by the way. Is that you don't a, even think uh, about like a, a mode like that? That's like your correct. Your 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 gaming like you're ready to go. Like what it is is uh, I think last year at some point th this is where I love it because the true like the real OGs of that show they just know they get they they like, they remember all the bits you know. Yeah. Uh, what happened is is uh, I believe last year there was an extra inning game and I was just like I need to put a rally hat on and I didn't have a rally hat so I had a hood so I put the hood on. <laughs> The Reds proceeded to win. So now if there is an extra inning game and or it's close, then I go get a hoodie. And that's just ultimately what I do is I put my hood on. Now I know that it looks preposterous. I know it looks stupid. But, you know, the, the, the good thing is, is that at some point you just stop caring um, about what yes. others might think in regards to what you're doing. And you just have fun and you enjoy the chat and you have fun uh, doing it your own way. So, yeah, the hood was my rally cap. And the rally cap will stay because it's it's – it's done me more good than harm. Put it yes. that way. It's done me more good than harm, having the uh, hood on. Speaking of hoods, hopefully uh, Reed will have his hood on here in just a bit. I'm going to give him a call right after this. But I just want to say thank you for supporting our small company. And we are growing. It's incredible. And it's all because of you spreading the word. Thank you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. God willing, 10A. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.